Good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. Fred TV bringing you coverage of Durfee High School, New Bedford Whaler, Thanksgiving morning football at Paul Welch Field in New Bedford. Cliff Ponty, Evan Massoud bringing you coverage on Fred TV for this tradition, which has turned to be a tradition here, football that has been played since 1909. Evan, what is it like to be a football player this morning? Well, like you said, it's all about the tradition, Cliff. That's really what it comes down to. And, you know, Durfee's coming into the game with a winless record right now, 0-9. And, and many feel that if they win this game, the season's still a success because that's how big the rivalry has become between these two teams. Durfee is winless going into today's game. New Bedford, 4-5, and five, looking to end the season 500. There is no possibility for New Bedford uh, to make it uh, to the playoffs because they did lose to Brockton. Mm -hmm. Putting the records aside this morning, putting everything aside, a lot of dedication, a lot of work ethic, a lot of time has been put into this season for all the players and coaches. Uh, how important is it for a player, especially the seniors this morning, regardless of the records? Regardless of the records, you know, this is their send-off. Um, you know, Thanksgiving Day is the big finale of the season, and it's something that, you know, both teams look forward to because this is such a historic, you know, rivalry. And uh, so for the seniors, it's definitely a big thing because it's their last game in this uniform, in their uniforms. So, Not only is it, you know, the last time in this uniform, but it's very possible at this level, uh, the last time anybody suits up a football uniform from a player's perspective. Now, going to Durfee for a second. Durfee has not had, as we call, a successful season on both sides of the football. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that changes today. Uh, Durfee has been outscored 354 to 88. Uh, what kind of game plan does Durfee put out there on an offensive side with their spread offense? Well, I think on the offensive side, they just need to try to score some points because that's been one of the biggest problems this year is finding the end zone. And we've seen that throughout the season as you and I have been following the team. They got to control the ball and they got to make things happen. They got to stay within themselves and not get too over anxious, you know. Um, that's when they play their best when they control the ball and just focus on that drive one play at a time. Do you, do you think Durfee will possibly go out and maybe change some things offensively throughout the last two seasons under Coach Jones? The Hilltoppers have run a spread offense, an offense that is really an offense that is geared towards uh, quick, athletic, fast, mm -hmm. kind of something Durfee really wasn't prone for in yeah. recent years. Spread offense, looking for that talent, looking for that skill. Mm -hmm. Durfee really hasn't come across that so much this year. Do you see something new on the offensive side of the football for Durfee? Well, I think something new would be refreshing, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, because, you know, in high school, one of the biggest things is you run the football, you run the football, you run the football. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for this Durfee team, Raheem Barzi, the running back, number 22, he's a captain, one of the four for the Hilltoppers. And Raheem is an exciting player. If anybody has seen him, he is an exciting player. And he's, you know, he is a running back. So he is a playmaker. And I think one of the biggest keys is get the ball to him and see if he can break away and just run down the field. I know we try to get away from the run because it's something that they have done a lot. But I think Barzi is going to be one of the biggest playmakers in this. And I think you'll also see some, some more passing than normal because you've got to try to get the Whalers off guard a little bit. Now, Durfee has, uh, throughout the course of the season, the games that we've covered and the games that we've watched and scouted for, for Durfee so far this year, they've, uh, they've had a tendency to throw the ball to number 18, Michael Career, for the Hilltoppers. Mm -hmm. He's had some uh, completions for Durfee, some very good ones as well. Do you see him getting the ball a lot? I do. In fact, um, their last home game, one of their last home games, Durfee, it was a crazy pass. I remember it was almost like from the 40-yard line, and somehow Correa came down with the ball in the corner. <laughs> Very athletic player. So um, I think he's definitely, definitely going to be a force out there You know, as a, rec as a receiver. Now going to the New Bedford side, uh, very much uh, success so far on the offensive and defensive side of the football, bringing the record to 4-5. and five. Uh, New Bedford has seen some success on the gridiron this year. Their offense has been led by quarterback Mike Raposa, who is three touchdown passes away. Uh, from tying a single season record that was um, put up in 1997 uh, by Johnny Seed. Uh, so we're going to probably expect to see not only a solid run game from New Bedford this morning, we're also going to see some passing. They are without their star uh, wide receiver this morning. However, on the defensive side of the football for Durfee, what kind of game plan do you put out there to stop this potent New Bedford offense? Well, it's going to be tough. Um, Durfee, on average, is allowing 34 points a game to their opponents. In fact, they've allowed 34 points, I think, about in half of their games. Mm -hmm. So giving up points is a big problem for Durfee this year. And 
adding in the good passing game for New Bedford is going to make it particularly tough. So I think that Durfee's defense really has to be thinking about the pass and not so much just trying to defend the run. I think they really need to be looking downfield, and the secondary has got to really be on their toes in this one. The secondary definitely needs to be on their toes. The, the Durfee has picked off five interceptions so far this year. They have turned the ball over quite a bit, though. Mm. Um, special teams is probably going to be a, a topic of conversation at the end of this game. It's a matter of field position. Football is always a matter of field position. Uh, so it, we'll, we'll really see uh, what Durfee comes out with. We are bringing you coverage on Fred TV, Thanksgiving football, Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford. We are going to be back with the starting lineups and more. Right here, Paul Welch Field, in just a few minutes. Thank you. And after that brief timeout, we welcome you back to Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford as we bring you coverage of Thanksgiving football. A tradition, a rivalry, something very exciting as always. And we, we, we discuss in the open, Evan, how important uh, this game is. It's an upperclassman game, but it really kind of shows how important it is. The younger kids, the sophomores, uh, Durfee has a lot of sophomores starting today on defense specifically. Uh, the, that, you know, the, the younger kids really experience a lot here and also dig a little deeper for the upperclassmen as well. Definitely, that's true. And, you know, these are the guys that are going to be basically stepping in for the few seniors that are going to be leaving and heading off to college. And, and even with that said, you know, I wanted to look back at some of these uh, last couple of years. New Bedford's won the last four games. Mm -hmm. So the seniors today, especially for Durfee, seniors – really looking to uh, hopefully pull out of wins so that they can say that they beat New Bedford once in their high school career. And, and, and not only that, you know, we, can, we, we were discussing again and also in the open, Evan, you know, Durfee didn't have a successful season last year. They won one game last year, this year winless. Uh, but Thanksgiving last year, the score was 18-16. The Hilltoppers were trailing 18-8 going into the half, yeah. came back, and it was a nail-biter. To the very last second it of last, last Thanksgiving morning. Special things always say, seem to happen on Thanksgiving. It, both sides step up play. You really never know what's going to happen. So um, I think it could be a blowout. I'm going right into predictions. I think New Bedford is probably going to pull ahead just because of the success that they've had. Um, my final score, I'm picking 37-18 New Bedford. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those where Durfee is definitely the underdog, so you got to go with the favorites in this one. And time will tell. We are going to bring you to the field in just a few seconds, and we are going to direct your attention uh, to the marching band as well as the color guard, the ROTC, as they play our national anthem.
Yeah, the white boy? Oh, no, yeah. The National Anthem is going to be playing momentarily, and but before that, we'll tell you that New Bedford has won the toss they have elected to receive. But before we get into all the game specifics, we're going to bring you right to the field as the Durfee High School Marching Band, along with the New Bedford Marching Band, along with the Color Guard and ROTC, play your National Anthem. And how about that for the du Durfee and New Bedford marching band together as one playing the national anthem this morning. Uh, that is always nice to see a, a school that of, of, of which is often rivals on the football field coming together to play the national anthem. And what a terrific job uh, done by both, uh, both departments in that regard. Definitely, Cliff. You know, it just shows the, you know, how tradition rich this is that even the two teams, you know, despite they're all friends you know when this Absolutely. game is over everybody's going to be you know still feeling and happy and it's just one of those deals where once they get on the field they start playing they want to beat each other but they're all friends they're all good guys and, uh, and that stems right down to the uh, musical accompaniment with the bands and this morning uh, we would like to also thank the new bedford cable tv for providing our cameras today we're going to be seeing quite a few New Bedford shots with all due respect to those watching in Fall River. Uh, it is no pun intended to you, uh, but uh, due to circumstances beyond our control, we're going to be seeing a lot of New Bedford. Hopefully, Durfee will be running the football a lot and scoring a lot of points. We'll be seeing more of Durfee, but regardless, we'd like to thank New Bedford and their crews and also the crew who is bringing you the coverage today uh, down in the booth, uh, we, uh, downstairs in the truck, rather. We thank you very much for that. So, as we were speaking earlier, uh, Evan, uh, Durfee has lost, the last time they won a Thanksgiving matchup was in 2007 when they beat New Bedford 37-34. That was the last time the Hilltoppers uh, won. That was under the um, that was at, at that Durfee High School also in 2008. The uh, Hilltoppers lost 37-6. to In 2009 it was a 49-28 score. New Bedford won in 2010 21 7 New Bedford and in 2011 New Bedford won a nail biter 18 to 16 so as mentioned New Bedford has won the toss they have elected to receive this game white hat official is Charles Ashley a veteran officiating crew will be officiating today's game Setting to kick for the Hilltoppers is number 41, Manny Fernandes, senior, 5'11", 215-pound senior for the Hilltoppers. And we are underway. It is a short kick. New Bedford will take possession, picked up by number 45 for New Bedford. That will be Ricky Morales for New Bedford. So it's going to be a first down and 10 for the New Bedford Whalers. Ball looks to be placed just about the 46-yard line of the inside hash mark. 
Yeah, it's great field position for the Whalers. Durfee uh, Fernandez did not get that ball up in the air, and it was more of a low liner, almost almost like they were trying for an onside kick, and it got kicked too far to do that because they're starting at about midfield. So that's great starting uh, field position for the Whalers. First down and 10 for New Bedford. Handoff go, fake handoff goes to number 12. Oh, no! Quarterback Mike Raposa takes it to the outside, brings it to the 40, past the 40, and he continues to go. There is a penalty marker on the field. Tackle is made by the Hilltoppers, but that is a huge game, but there is a penalty marker on the field. Let's see what Charles Ashley's first call of today's game is gonna look like. Yeah, Raposa faking the handoff, the quarterback, the playmaker for the Whalers, and he called his own number and took it himself down the sidelines. It would stand as about a 40 yard gain if this play stands. And it is holding against New Bedford. As a result, it's gonna bring them back. So that is a huge loss, it is a Penalty from the spot of the foul. And yeah, that hurts, because that's going to take about 20 yards off that run. Which was a nice opening run for New Bedford. Uh, New Bedford is accompanied by senior quarterback. He's 5'11", 185 pounds. He has a record to catch today. Number 15, we're going to see a lot. We're going to speak a lot about number 15, Mike Raposa, who is a starting quarterback, great athlete. New Bedford breaks the huddle with number 22, Stephen Azor to the far side left. In number eight, Preston Perry, 5'11", 160 pounds senior, also a running back set on the far side right. Yeah, a little delay here, uh, the, the chain gang over there trying to get the, uh, getting the line straight here. It's always, it's always figured out though. Definitely, clock moving now and get ready to hit the action again. Snap goes and handoff is given to number 12 for New Bedford. There is another penalty marker on the field. The handoff goes to number 12, Michael LaJoy for New Bedford. The penalty marker on the field once again. Let's see what the White Hat official has to say this time. You figure to see a lot of uh, penalties in this one just because of you know all the hype and, and all of the adrenaline in, in these players tend to see some mistakes. And once again, another hold on New Bedford. So the holding is going to set them back again. As a result, the down has yet to change. It is still first down. It will repeat first down. It is a penalty from the spot of the fall. So New Bedford has had two plays, two penalties, sets them back. They still have first down. Positive yardage though with the continued holds for New Bedford. So they break the huddle once again with Preston Perry on the far side left and Stephen Azor on the far side right. Handoff does go to New Bedford. However, the loose ball is recovered. He is set to be down by the official has him down. It is a second down, a gain of about two yards. New Bedford will continue to have possession of the football. Uh, the Hilltoppers celebrating what they thought was a fumble recovery there, but apparently the knee was down. And yeah, there was number 12, Michael Joy Jr. He was down on the play and the whistle was blown. So dead ball and New Bedford regains control. New Bedford has been in control since the start of this game offensively. Durfee has yet to see any offensive action. So we're looking at a second down in about nine for New Bedford. Mike Raposa, the only one in the backfield, the quarterback. Pass goes to number 22, incomplete. That was intended for number 22, Mahuka King for New Bedford. The four and five New Bedford Whalers, we're gonna be seeing a lot of passing as mentioned in the open. Number 15, Mike Raposa is scheduled, or at least will most likely attempt to put a record together as he is three passes away from tying a school record with the most completions in New Bedford. And going back to that last play, let's not forget Durfee uh, defender Isaiah Slowick, a senior at number two. Great defense on the pass there, looking at the ball the whole time. Sets back is number 15, Mike Raposa. Shoots it off to number four. That is a completed pass to number four, Stephen Azor. That is a New Bedford touchdown. That was sweet, Cliff. That was a very nice play done by New Bedford. Pass was complete to number four, Stephen Azor. From their quarterback, number four. Stephen Azor is a wide receiver, 5'9", 170 pound senior. 
Yeah, that was just a fabulous pass right there, and you see why Raposo is having such a fabulous season. That's about a 40-yard touchdown pass on the opening drive for New Bedford, and they go up quickly 6-0 on the Hilltoppers. So with eight minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first quarter, New Bedford has maintained possession of the football so far this game. They are going for the extra point. Set to kick is number four, Stephen Azor. And it is a crack snap, but recovered by New Bedford. I'm sorry, the, the kick was kicked by number 15, their quarterback, Mike Raposa. My correction there, I stand corrected. So as a result, New Bedford uh, has a 6-0 lead with 8 minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first quarter. Yeah, it was an interesting opening drive for the Whalers. Two penalties, first downs all the way because of those penalties, and uh, it ends up with the big touchdown pass from Raposo. So now the Whalers go on defense. We'll see if Durfee can answer in their opening drive. That would be a big boost for the morale of the Hilltoppers if they can come back and strike and score some points on their opening drive. Durfee, Durfee definitely needs to capitalize by taking control of this game on the offensive side of the football. And Durfee set deep for Durfee is number two Isaiah Slowick and number 18 Michael Correr for the Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers will bring another young offense to the field under the direction of senior number seven Quinton Souza. 5'8", 175-pound senior for Durfee. And a pretty solid offensive line. We'll see number 74, Kendrick Dixon, on the offensive tackle. Cody LaPointe, Jacob Kennedy, Alex Benavides, and Omi Montetez for the Hilltoppers on the offensive side. Set to kick for New Bedford is number 15, Mike Raposa, the playmaker for New Bedford. And a pretty solid kick recovered by Durfee's Number four, Spencer Borden. He brings it out to solid field position for Durfee Shy, the 35. First down and 10 for the Hilltoppers at just about the 35 yard line. Yeah, the Hilltoppers, we talked in the open cliff about the offense and the defense. The defense has struggled tremendously for the Hilltoppers this year, allowing an average of 34 points. The offense has made plays, but what happens is penalties hurt them. I can recall back to one of their home games recently, they allowed 60 yards in personal fouls. That just can't happen. That's not a good recipe to winning a football game. So they need to control the football. And look at that, passing from the first, uh, the first snap of the game, they're actually passing the ball. So trying to maybe change things up a bit as we talked about. And it was an incomplete pass intended for number four, Spencer Borden for the Hilltoppers. He's a senior, 180 pound senior for Durfee. And we did discuss in the open, uh, Evan, how important it is for Durfee maybe to switch things up on the offensive side of the football. They do run that spread offense. They spread their offense out throughout the course of the field. Uh, they, they run very little, if any, power, which is something that Durfee was prone for back in the day. Do not see a lot of that. So the Hilltoppers break the huddle uh, with number 20, Colby Cabral on the far side left. And Spencer Borden on the far side right, and it is complete. I'm sorry to number two, Isaiah Slowick. He's bringing it down all the way to the 40. That is a first down for Durfee from just about the 40, shy of the 40, at about, yeah, we're looking at about the 40 yard line. So first down and 10, the, the Hilltoppers first first down of the game, and how important is that for solid field position for Durfee? Oh, that's huge. You know, I really am liking this. Uh, you know, you wait for Durfee, you're waiting for all the high school teams to try to change things up because you see so many of them running the football. Two quick passes. This one was complete, good for about 20 plus yards, and they're already in the Whalers territory. He does it again to number two, Isaiah Slowick. It's a minimal gain there for Durfee, about a two yard gain. It is complete to number two, Isaiah Slowick. So certainly Durfee coming out with things a little differently than they have throughout the course of the season this year. Uh, they have yet to run the ball on the four times they have had possession of the football this drive. So something a little different than Durfee is, is used to showing New Bedford. So as we discussed, Evan, they're definitely looking to spice things up on Thanksgiving morning. And I think they need to because the Whalers offense is pretty tough. Um, you know, with the passing game and the good running game, the, the Hilltoppers need to find some way to answer. And look at once again, lining up in a formation, ready to pass. Taking it himself is number seven, uh, Quentin Souza for the Hilltoppers. A gain of about a yard or so. That's going to bring us to a third down here for the Hilltoppers. Breaking out of the huddle for Durfee on a repetitive basis so far has been number 18, Michael Carrera. He's been setting up on your far side right. 
Colby Cabral is a sophomore, 5'7", 145 pound sophomore, number 20, breaking out on your far side left. The Hilltoppers have come out with Raheem Barzi in the backfield. He is a senior, 5'11", 185 pound senior, running back for Durfee, number 22. So they break it again, switching it up, 18. Michael Carrera on your far side left, Colby Cabral on your far side right, Raheem Barzi in the backfield. And there is a timeout taken by New Bedford, Dennis Golden, head coach for New Bedford, who's been at the helm here for New Bedford for quite some time, has uh, definitely had quite the tradition of, uh, of coming out with uh, some good New Bedford teams in the last couple of years. Definitely, and you know, we see, we were talking about Barzi being lined up in the backfield. Haven't seen the captain get the ball. Uh, Quinton Souza took that last run himself, the quarterback. We got a third and five coming up here. I'd like to see them give the ball over to Barzi because Barzi could really break free here. They're in New Bedford territory, pretty close to the red zone, and this would be a good time, I think, to, to get your first run of the game. A 20-second timeout taken by New Bedford. That's their first timeout taken so far this game. Kobe Cabral sets up on your far side left. Michael Carrera on your far side right. Oh. Raheem Barzi set up in the backfield. Accompanying him is quarterback number seven, Quinton Souza. Snap goes to Souza. He sets back to pass. He's not going to. He's going to just take it himself, and he gets tripped up. He has a gain of about four yards. It's going to see. It's going to be real close. However, the officials on the linesman side is going to take us to a fourth down. What a shame because he had plenty of room to run. You're going to see it here on your screen. Breaks free. He actually didn't, he slipped. Feel maybe a little damp. It was kind of mild last night for this time of year. I mean, it's still cold, but it, you know, it wasn't below freezing. The field damp and he slipped. That that that's disappointing because he had plenty of room to get the first down and it's, it stands. It's no gain on the play. So a fourth and five coming up. So it is a fourth and five. Hilltoppers are not punting. They haven't been a team that usually punts too often. Not at all. We can see. Yeah. So fourth down in the middle of the field. It's at the 35-yard line. New Bedford is going to take another timeout. I believe, or if there's a penalty marker on the field, we're getting an indication there is a penalty marker on the field, and it is against the Hilltoppers. It's going to be a five-yard penalty off sides against Durfee. That is a dead ball fall, so it's going to set him back five. It will remain fourth down, moving into a fourth down in a 10-yard needed for Durfee. Fourth and 10 from the 40 now for Durfee. So that sets him back five, Evan. How important is it for solid and maintaining field position this morning? Yeah, that really hurts the Hilltoppers, uh, the false start. Somebody moved at the line, and uh, that, that's really going to make things difficult on this fourth down uh, conversion attempt. You know, five yards is sometimes reasonable, but ten yards, they're going to really need to pull something out of their, uh, their hats on this one. So we're looking at a fourth down. There is a referee is going to kill the clock here, and it is a timeout taken by the Hilltoppers. It is a, the Hilltoppers' first time out taken so far this morning. Cliff Ponte, Evan Massoud bringing you coverage of Thanksgiving football from Paul Walsh Field here in New Bedford. Both teams coming off a 35-12 losses. New Bedford lost to Brockton. New Bedford has dropped two of their last two straight of their last two games. They've lost two of the last two. Boy, I can speak this morning. <laughs> it's okay, Cliff. <laughs> I haven't They've had lost enough. two in a row. Hilltoppers 0-9. <laughs> and... Uh, not a bad idea to take the timeout, though, but for the Hilltoppers, take a look at the defense. And so Quentin Souza takes it himself. He's going to look to run. He instead passes, and it is complete to number 18, Michael Carrera for Durfee. That is plenty. That's going to bring him up to the 10-yard line. What wow. a great job by the offensive line there, giving Quentin Souza protection, led by their uh, sophomore class. Um, I'm sorry, their, their sophomore offensive tackle, Kendrick Dixon, your left tackle, and your right tackle, Omi Montez, giving solid protection. So we're going to be looking at a first down in 10. It's going to be a first down. They're going to need about 11 for a touchdown, so they're going to bring the chains out. We're looking at the first quarter right now, five minutes and 24 seconds to go. Looks like a first and goal from the 10. They're spotting the ball at the 10. That was fabulous. We talked about Barzi being an exciting player. Well, Correa is going to be here for two more years, and he's just as exciting. Number two, Isaiah Sloick on the completion. It's about a yard gain there for Durfee. Durfee definitely moving the ball offensively here, something we haven't seen too much of so far this season, coming out with stuff a little bit different and a little creative, does Coach Jones so far on Thanksgiving morning. Definitely. I'm still impressed. That last play was incredible. I don't know how Oliver got free to make that pass down the sidelines to Correa. Just 
once again, a little bit of magic on Thanksgiving Day. It always seems to find uh, the Whalers and the Hilltoppers on the field. Clock running with four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Six nothing New Bedford, but Durfee is threatening in the, within their New Bedford within New Bedford's end zone. They take number 18, Michael Correa, put him in motion. Number 22, Raheem Barzi in the backfield, and the handoff goes to number 22, Raheem Barzi. There is a penalty marker on the field. It's a loss if the penalty is against Durfee. We will see what they call White Hat official Charles Ashley will be giving us the call this morning. A veteran officiating crew, lots of years of experience from all five members of this officiating crew this morning. Penalty might, depending on what it is, might not be too bad of a situation because Drifty lost yards on that run. Barzi got tackled in the backfield for a loss of about two. So we'll wait to see what this penalty is. And the rest of in deliberation, it never, it's never good because you never know what it's gonna be. And it is it's against the, New Bedford. Wow. It is against New Bedford, so that definitely helps the Hilltoppers in that regard. A five-yard penalty. They'll hold on to a second down. There's an offsides penalty against New Bedford. That's so that, big. So that is a second down. Hilltoppers are placed at just about the six-yard line, threatening at the New Bedford six. They open up with Michael Carrera on your far side right, number two, Raheem Barzi on your far side left in 20. Kobe Cabral on your far side left as well. Taking the staff is number seven, Quinton Souza. Sets it up for number 18, Michael Carrera, oh, and it great. is an incomplete pass intended for Michael Carrera, broken up by New Bedford's number four, Stephen Azor. So it looks like there on that play though, Evan, there seemed to be some contact from New Bedford, but no penalty marker on the field. Yeah, that was my first initial thought, but you know, Azor, he's looking at the ball the whole time, and that's important when you're defending. If you're not looking at the ball, you're gonna get you're gonna get tagged for pass interference. But if you're looking for the ball, looking to try to intercept it, very rarely are you gonna have a flag thrown at you. So great job on the defense for the Whalers there because that looked to be a Durfee touchdown from the from the get-go. It is a Third down for Durfee. Durfee threatening third and six. Handoff goes to number 22, Raheem Varzin. He's stuffed by a bunch of new Bedford Whalers. Accompanying him was number 52 for New Bedford, making the tackle very minimal. That's Tyler Arena, the other captain, number 52. So it is a fourth down. Kind of interesting to see the Hilltoppers threatening at their six yard line what they're going to do here on fourth down obviously they're going to go for it they were going for it at their at the new bedford 35 let's see what coach jones has it is six nothing new bedford the clock is stopped with i'm sorry the clock is running three minutes 20 seconds to go in the first quarter here at paul walsh field in new bedford so it's a fourth down hilltoppers need six quinton souza it is complete. What an unbelievable catch by number 18, Michael Correa for new for, for Durfee. What an unbelievable catch in the Hilltoppers on the scoreboard. It is a tie ball game. We're talking 6-6. Six, six. Wow. Wow is all I could say. Correa went for a ride on that. The, he really took a hit. But you know what? Scoring points, he paid the price. Look at that tumble wow. on your screen. But that was just incredible. What an athletic player Michael Correa is and how lucky the Hilltoppers are to have him not only today, but for the next two years. He's only a sophomore and he's that good. And let's see, are we gonna go for two? Durfee very rarely kicks an extra point. They could take a lead here. That is to number 18, sophomore, six feet, 160 pound wide receiver for Durfee. And the Hilltoppers are going for two. They're as always opening up in their spread offense. Number seven, Quinton Souza. Your quarterback, Raheem Barzi, the only man in the backfield that he's gonna set up to pass. And he's gonna attempt to throw, try to take it himself, and it is also caught again by number 18, Michael Carrera. The Hilltoppers go for two, and they're successful with it. Wow. So the Hilltoppers take an early lead going for two, and it's a success to number 18, Michael Carrera. What hands he has, and he takes complete control of the last couple of drives there for Durfee, putting the Hilltoppers on top with an 8-6 lead with three minutes to go in the first quarter. You see on the replay, Oliver scrambling, telling Correa, get free, get free. And so, look at that, right through the New Bedford defender's hands, Correa somehow holding on to it. What is this Durfee team we're seeing? This is a total reversal of what we've seen in the first nine games of the season. So far, so good for Durfee. Durfee definitely coming out with clean, hard-nosed football, the football that they need to know, they learn to know, and they were enriched by their coach, Coach Jones throughout the course of this season. Wow. So, 
The Hilltoppers surprising New Bedford, surprising us, and surprising the stand, the fans in the stands. This young Durfee defense is going to be tested here and hopefully can hold New Bedford. Manny Fernandes is set to kick for Durfee, and it's a solid kick picked up by New Bedford, number 30. And he's taking it all the way out to the 40, pushed out of bounds and tackled by D Durfee's number four, Spencer Borden. So solid field position here for the New Bedford Whalers at shy of the 50 yard line. They're gonna take it out first down and 10. How important is it for this young Durfee defense to hold New Bedford here, Evan? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you come back and you're able to drive right down the field and, uh, and score eight points. So now you're ahead. And you know, you mentioned about the fans in the stands. It helps to have Durfee's side of the field. Those stands are pretty full. You can see them on, at the top of your screen right now. So Durfee playing behind their fans. It's great to see that here and they're hoping the fans can help them out on defense too. A lot of pressure given there by Durfee. It is a completed pass to number 12, Michael LaJoy for New Bedford. That's gonna bring him out to solid field position there. That's gonna bring him out to the 30 yard line, shy of the 30, actually closer to the 32. First down and 10 from the 32 yard line for New Bedford. Brad Kilby making the tackle, another sophomore, number 37, because if he didn't make that tackle, Mike LaJoy was gone. So Durfee takes the timeout here, their first full team timeout for the Hilltoppers. We also like to remind you next weekend already, Operation Christmas Telethon. I couldn't, uh, we, we, we were talking about it this morning. As I know. We do have the timeout, Operation Christmas. We we ask you to, to join us. It's a it's, it's a weekend filled with fun, excitement, and, 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 and something that has become part of our family here at Fred TV for many, many years. Citizens for Citizens, the Operation Christmas Telethon. It is the first weekend of December, so we ask you to please join us for that. Uh, it is, a, again, going to be at the Harbor Mall, I, I am yep. I am assuming. It's um, such a great cause, you know, absolutely. and, and uh, it's something that I look forward to helping out with every year. I know you do as yep. well, yep. and um, so be sure to tune in. It's going to be live all weekend, uh, channels 17 and I believe 18. I think we're streaming on both channels again, or live on the web from anywhere in the world, fredtv.us and frgtv.us. So at first down and 10, the handoff does go, does go to number 12. Mike LaJoy, he's gonna bring it in for a New Bedford touchdown. He's gonna to bring it about 22 yards there for a New Bedford touchdown. So that brings New Bedford back on top and New Bedford didn't have much time of possession there. They just ran down the field on this young Durfee defense. Yeah, yeah that didn't take very long, Cliff. Uh, clearly uh, LaJoy, the guy to go to in this drive because he gained most of the yards, about 60. Um, Number 12. Definitely, definitely uh, the guy that they wanted to go to on this. He, he just stormed right up the field. Running back number 12, Mike LaJoy Jr. is a running back. He's 5'8", 165 pounds. So that brings New Bedford to a lead here of 12-8. They're going for the extra point with two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Number 15, Mike Raposa, also their key player. They're also their quarterback. Got a false start on the offense, so the extra point's gonna get backed up here. So it's going to be a five yard loss there for New Bedford. It's gonna be for there for New Bedford, so they're gonna be kicking it from the 15 instead of the 10. Interesting, because on the first extra point of tap, they botched the snap. Oh, they're faking and it. They're faking it, and they're going, it is incomplete pass intended for number 30 for New Bedford, that is Carl Santos, the tight end, 5'9", 175 pound senior for New Bedford. So they tried to do something a little bit differently. I could have called it from up here if the Durfee coaches saw it. Uh, number 15, Mike Raposa was asking the coach, should we do it again after the penalty? So that kind of gave it away there, but needless yeah, to say, ready. it was unsuccessful and New Bed and, and Durfee, their young defense, was prepared for it. So. This game is, is definitely so far a great football game. Thanksgiving morning, New Bedford 12, Durfee 8, first quarter. We're looking at two minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Hilltoppers have number 18, Michael Carrere, set deep. Also, we're looking at number two for Durfee, Isaiah Slowick. 145 pounds senior for Durfee. Accompanying him is the sophomore 6'1", 160 pound 
Sophomore for Durfee, Michael Correa also set back. Sets a kick for New Bedford, number 15. Their quarterback and their captain, Mike Raposa, 5'11", senior, 185 pound senior for Durfee. I'm sorry, for New Bedford. Good kick. And the kick is off, picked up by number two, Isaiah Slow. He's gonna bring it all the way up and it's gonna be first down and 10 from the 30 yard line as long as the official spots it at the 30. And he does, places the ball at the 30 yard line, first down and 10 for Durfee from the 30. Yeah, Slowak with about a uh, 15 plus yard run there, gets tripped up at about the 28, falls down at the 30. So Durfee with a uh, pretty de decent field position. They really ate up a lot of the clock on that first drive and uh, we'll look to see if they can do that again because New Bedford took all of, what, 50 seconds to mm -hmm. score on their second drive. So Durfee uh, like to get down the field and, you know, maybe get back in front and put up some more points. A game all about field position in time. The Hilltoppers are first down and 10 from the 30. On the snap is number seven, Quinton Suze. He's dancing, he's getting plenty of protection, but getting pressure by number 21. He does throw, throw it out of bounds. Yeah, nobody was open down the field. The uh, secondary for New Bedford doing a great job at covering the wide receivers for Durfee. I'm loving, though, the passing game right now. This is showing such um, aggressive play right now because we n very rarely would see this from Durfee. So they, they really came into this game with, uh, with an attack mode, and that is pass the football, and let's see if New Bedford can handle it. And so far, so good for Durfee. Their first drive, they bring it in. They take it all the way downfield. They did start it at the 45, the first drive of the game. And taking control of the drive was number 18, Michael Carrere for Durfee. So the Hilltoppers break the huddle with Michael Carrere set up on your far side right. Nobody except for number 20, Kobe Cabral set up on your far side left. Raheem Barzi in the backfield snap, handoff fake to number 22, Raheem Barzi. Quinton Souza passes the ball to number 18, Michael Carrere. And from what I see up here, that is a completion to number 18, Michael Carrere. It is a third down. Four yard completion there, Correa getting the football all over this field so far. I think that's his fourth reception of the morning. We, yes, it's still the morning. <laughs> I wanted to say still evening. Still the morning here. <laughs> so rare to, to, to be playing in the morning. This is the one time a year that we do. So yeah, we're still in the morning. And we got a third and six coming up from the 34. Third and six from the 34. It is one minute and 42 seconds to go. 12-8 New Bedford on tap. Hilltoppers break the huddle with the same huddle as last drive. Quinton Souza. Looking for somebody to pass to, and it is complete to number 18, Michael Carrer again. And what a start of the game for number 18, Michael Carrer. This guy needs to be signed up for next year for Turfy. Number 18, Michael Carrer gives the Hilltopper solid field position midway through. Shy of the 50 at the 49, first down and 10 for Durfee. Yeah, Oliver is showing great poise uh, with, as a quarterback in the pocket. If he has to get out to the sides, he, he's really... He's really staying within himself. You see the replay there. Correa, once again, in stride, great hands, and a great pass from, from uh, Quinton Souza. So Correa now sets up on your far side left. Kobe Cabral all the way on your far, far side right on the line for Durfee. Quinton Souza, the quarterback for Durfee. Does a quick pass to number two, Isaiah Slowick. However, it is ruled incomplete as a ball to touch the ground before it was picked up by number two, Isaiah Slowick for Durfee. It's going to be a second down, second down and 10. Ball shy of the 50, close to the 49 yard line for the Hilltoppers. That incomplete pass does stop the clock with a minute and two seconds to go in the first quarter. Yeah, it was a low pass and it just grazed the grass. And, you know, and speaking of the grass, a little bit off topic, but it's so nice to see a field with the natural grass. You know, the turf is great, it's easy to, to uh, maintain because there's really nothing to do, it's just there. But these grass fields, there's nothing like playing on the grass. Well, the handoff there goes to number 22, Raheem Barzi for Durfee. Durfee has not yet had positive yardage or positive gains on the run attack so far today, but their passing game has so far been phenomenal for Durfee. Absolutely, and uh, they're gonna be forced, uh, faced with a third and 12 coming up, and it's not gonna be easy. They're gonna, I mean, I, 
Durfee very rarely punts, so do we say this is four down territory? I would venture to say yes. With so it. you have to think you have two two shots here at the first down, but they really need to pick up a few on this third down. With a game so in, with a game so important of field position and control of the football, that might be a wise play for Durfee to do, depending on the result here. However, a timeout is taken by the this New Bedford Whaler defense. It is a timeout taken. That is their second 22nd timeout for New Bedford. It is not a full timeout taken. Uh, and a lot of emphasis here, Evan, should be portrayed to the Durfee offensive line, a young offensive line. They have sophomores. They have one, two. They got three sophomores uh, and a junior and two seniors on their offensive line, definitely giving quarterback number seven, Quinton Souza, plenty of time uh, for, of protection so we could have a successful passing game so far this game. Definitely, and you know, I said Oliver earlier, it's actually Sousa, the quarterback, so excuse me there, but Sousa definitely showing great poise as the quarterback in this game. He hasn't started most games at quarterback, so this is fairly new to him uh, this season, and he's really done a great job putting looking number, to pass again. Putting number 18, Michael Correa in motion, and it is a complete again to number 18, Michael Correa. Wow. That's gonna move the Hilltoppers down the field to a first down in 10. We are looking at the end of the first quarter here. Clock winding down, five seconds in the quarter. So that'll be it for the first, but I'm telling you, Cliff, Correa is an exciting player. This kid has a future in, in athletics. If it's not football, you know, maybe in other sports, but he is definitely an athletic player. He, and he definitely is taking complete control of this drive in this offensive series. Every time the Hilltoppers have had possession of the football was number 18, Michael Correa. He is a only a sophomore. He's six feet. He's 160 pounds, and is definitely so far accompanying him was, is, is a solid uh, offensive line. I'm sorry, 6'1", 160 pounds for number 18, Michael Correa. He's definitely moving around in the backfield and definitely putting a lot of pressure on this new Bedford secondary. Absolutely, and you know, he's like, he has two men on him almost every time he goes to pass the ball, and somehow he comes down with it. That's like the, sec the third time he's actually leaped up above the defender, so he's really, uh, he's quite the player, and, it, and it's really nice to see that he's going to be around for two more years. Durfee has been outscored so far this season, 354-88 to 88 coming here to Thanksgiving morning, uh, and it's definitely been, you know, a, s a sore topic, you know, discussing the offensive attack. Durfee has, there's been a lot of speculation from a lot of people if this spread offense is, is really what is meant for Durfee. Uh, Durfee has been a program enriched in the past on power, some misdirection. Mm -hmm. So Durfee the last couple of seasons uh, has definitely been showing more of a spread offense. Maybe sometimes it might have been wise for example, when they were down at the third down, you know, at the five yard line, maybe running the ball, but they were successful there. So, you know, the, the attack that Coach Jones has portrayed and, and the message has been sent definitely to New Bedford, they need definitely. to be on their toes. Definitely, and I, I'm, I said this earlier, I'm loving the, the aggressive play here by not being afraid to pass. Because there were a lot of games this year that we saw and very rarely did you see this. This is consistent passing game uh, for the Hilltoppers and the Whalers defense. It, in my opinion, the defense for the Whalers has yet to step it up and really uh, snuff out these passes because Hilltoppers keep making completions. They keep gaining yards. And Carrera setting up on your far side left this time. That is a completed pass to number 22, Raheem Barzi. He's going to bring it in. He's going to bring it to about the 25-yard line with a penalty marker on the field. That is, that penalty marker was thrown where Raheem Barzi was pushed out of bounds. So we'll see what white hat official referee Charles Ashley has to say. Definitely good for a first down. If this goes on New Bedford, uh, could be looking at more it yards. Is, it for is a face mask against the New Bedford Whalers, so that is definitely going to help definitely. the Hilltoppers there. Durfee definitely potent on offense, something that we haven't seen at all this year. That is a huge helper there. That is a that is a penalty from the spot of the fall. It's a first down. That's going to bring the Hilltoppers, I believe, all the way to the 11 yard line. Cliff. To the 11 yard line. There we go. So first down wow. and 10 for the Hilltoppers from the 11 yard line. They break the huddle with Colby Cabral set up on your far side left. Accompanying his side is number four. Spencer Borden and all the way to our far side right is Michael Carrere. Number two, Isaiah Slovak to his left. 22, Raheem Barzi in the backfield. The snap goes to number seven, Quinton Souza. He passes it to number two. 
Isaiah Slowick that it was an incomplete pass, a little off target there, but he was wide open again. This new Bedford secondary definitely needs to step it up here on the de defensive side of the football, but Durfee will take it all day long. Definitely, Cliff. Slowick was open and he had room to run. He only had one defender looking him in his face. So he had plenty of room and, and you know, they're so close to the end zone, he could have made it in. They say if it's not broke, don't fix it. So let's see what Definitely. the Hilltoppers do. On the 11-yard line, they're looking at second down. We are in the second quarter with 10 minutes, 38 seconds to go. New Bedford on top, 12 to 8. They open up with Michael Carrera on your far side left, Raheem Barzi in the backfield, and they fake the handoff to Raheem Barzi, taking it himself as number seven, Quinton Souza. A reasonable gain there for Durfee. That's going to bring him to about, about the six. Sarah. About the six yard line. It is going to be a third down from the six. How important is this third down for Durfee? It's big, and you know, I was going to say that this would be a good time on second down, try going to Raheem Barzi and see if he can carry the ball, but uh, Souza carried it himself, and right now on the third, and actually looks like the ball's spotted at the eight, so we have about a third and seven coming up. I'm sensing a pass to Michael Correa. So far, that's been what has been the success here for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Colby Cabral on your far side left, young sophomore, and Correa setting up this side on our far side right, Raheem Barzi in the backfield. Quinton Souza moving out to his left park it, and it is intercepted by New Bedford. Number 40 for New Bedford intercepts it, and does that hurt for Durfee? Cody Fumo, 6'1", 175 pound senior for New Bedford, intercepts the ball, and what a game changer that is for Durfee. Yeah, that, that's some of the things that have happened this year for Durfee, where they're so close to the end zone and they can't make it happen, um, be it because of a foul, or a flag rather, or be it because of you know a turnover, and that that really hurts. Just being a few yards shy of a score, now Durfee's going to go back on defense, coming out of that with no points. So this young Durfee defense is once again going to be tested. We're going to be seeing at the line. We're going to be seeing senior up, defensive lineman captain. Manny Fernandes, he's going to be playing the nose. Jaden Texera, number 75, your senior 5'10", 250 pound big kid, is going to be also on the tackle with Cody LaPointe also as your tackle. So the Hilltoppers are running a 4-3 defense. The handoff does go to number 12. That will be Mike LaJoy, who's been definitely taking a lot of the yardage there for New Bedford so far this game. Yeah, the senior LaJoy, uh, he's really done a great job in this game. And it, the ref signaling a first down. It sure didn't look like it from, from where LaJoy fell down, but apparently a really good spot given to New Bedford here. So they moved the chains and they get a fresh set of downs. But Durfee, this is going to be a really big drive for Durfee to defend uh, because Durfee gets the ball to start the second half because they kicked off to begin the game. And there's going on right now nine minutes left to play in this first half so they want to get the ball back without with you know minimal damage done here taking it himself his quarterback number 15 michael raposa on the tackle there for the hilltoppers accompanying a few of them for durfee was linebacker jonathan torres accompanying him also was captain spencer borden so also brent kilby in the action there for for the hilltoppers yeah, that's a good stop on first down, uh, sniffing out the run with the Hilltoppers and only allowing the Whalers to grab one yard on that. Probably going to see a pass here, I'd have to I'd have to think, because with the record, record is, you know, within grasp for uh, Raposo. He's been successful so far, and you are accurate. He actually, he fakes the pass, fakes the handoff, and he throws it all the way to a wide open. Number 22, Mahook. King, he was wide open. There wasn't any white jerseys there at all, and it was overthrown by New Bedford quarterback Mike Raposa. I'm not sure if I'd even say overthrown. King had the whole field. How did he not come down with this? He slowed down. You, you, it was unbelievable. He slowed down in his tracks, and if he had been running in a full sprint the whole time, he would have made the over-the-shoulder catch. I mean, he was gone. He was into tomorrow. <laughs> and, and the misdirection there for New Bedford certainly, that hurts. certainly, certainly was well played by Mike Raposa. Definitely had this young Durfee defense caught off guard. So, as a result, we're looking at a third down. I wouldn't be surprised if they pass it again. They open up with a nice spread here. 
is New Bedford with one in the backfield, which is your running back, Michael LaJoy. And number eight, Preston Perry set up on your far side right. He passes it to number four, incomplete, intended for number four, Stephen Azor. We do need to make note that New Bedford is without their star in, in, in Mike Repose's favorite wide receiver, Nunez. He is not playing today. He did get injured in practice this, uh, this week, so he is not playing today. Definitely hurts there for New Bedford as it was definitely Mike Repose's go-to guy so far this season. And he certainly may have had sun in his eyes on that missed opportunity there for New Bedford. It looks like they're going to punt. So Mike Raposa set to punt for New Bedford. Durfee has number two, Isaiah Slowick, and number 18, Michael Carrere, set back. And he fakes the punt, and he is stuffed, and he is met by number 41, Manny Fernandes for the Hilltoppers, the captain accompanying him, number 75. Jaden Texera, and that results in excellent, excellent, excellent field position here for the Durfee Hilltoppers in New Bedford's own 20 yard line. First down and 10 for the 20. Another opportunity here, Evan. Durfee needs to capitalize on. Yeah, we take a look at the replay here, and the fake just not happening for the Whalers. The Durfee sidelines is pumped up right now. The coach is pumped up, but then. <laughs> immediately after celebrating, reminding their players stay within themselves because we still have a football game to play. Drifty takes over almost where they gave up the ball. So this is great. They're starting in the red zone from the 20. From the 20 is number seven, Quinton Suze. He's going to take it in. and he's What a great block by number 18. Michael Carreri gets it to the inside. It is a touchdown for the Hilltoppers. Number seven, Quinton Souza brings it in for a Hilltopper touchdown. However, there is plenty of penalty markers on the field. I'm counting one, two, three, four penalty markers on the field. This might be brought back. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We have a hold. Let's see what official Charles Ashley has to say. A hold against the Hilltoppers. That was an unfortunate set of circumstances there for Durfee. That's going to bring him back. And it is from the spot of the foul. That happened early in the play. And that brings him out. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It's going to be, it will remain first down from the 30. That's a shame because Oliver was gone. I mean, that this whole sequence over the last couple minutes between the defense and the offense, Durfee's defense, let's not forget how big they just stepped up to get this football back. Uh, allowing one first down and then stopping the, the Whalers deep in their territory. But now they hit a snag. They're going to have a first and 20 coming up after the hold. A game that is so important with possession, time, and field position. Hilltoppers break the huddle with one man in the backfield. Accompanying him is Raheem Barzi along with the quarterback, Quinton Souza. Michael Carrera set up on your far side right, and it is a completed pass to number four, Spencer Borden. He's going to bring it in for a Hilltopper touchdown. Captain to captain connection there. Unbelievable set. Another unbelievable drive there for the Hilltoppers. Number four, Spencer Borden switching it up here. And it is a touchdown for the Hilltoppers, taking a 14 to 12 lead. Seven minutes and 34 seconds to go in the second quarter. Spencer Borden just in stride catching that. As I said, captain to captain connection. Sousa finding Borden in stride. And Borden just goes right around the New Bedford defender down the sidelines. And that goes as a 30-yard touchdown pass, a second for the morning for Quentin Souza. And it looks like uh, they're going for two again. Hilltoppers like appear it. to be looking, going for two here. Quentin Souza in the backfield, accompanying number 22, Raheem Barzi. Michael Carrera on your far side left. Slowick on your far side right, accompanying him, Spencer Borden. And it is no good. It was intended for number four, Spencer Borden, senior. 180 pound senior for Durfee, that is an incomplete. However, on a positive side there, the Hilltoppers regain the lead here and how important it is for a solid kick here for Durfee. It is important that the Hilltoppers, I'm sure you'll agree with me Evan here, try to set New Bedford as deep in their own territory as possible. Oh, absolutely Cliff, and you know, in that drive, that going for the two points there as you mentioned the ball was actually it bounced on the ground so it never actually got to Borden so that's why that was no good but yes I totally agree with you here they need a deep kick and they need to play defense very much like they did last time they got a couple lucky breaks but the defense definitely stepped up and the offense just regained the lead so now go back on defense stay within yourselves 
and try to play man, I would say man coverage at this point because you just want to try to hold New Bedford back. They ask Manny Fernandes to kick the ball deep and they do that in success. Number 30 for New Bedford picks it Ooh, up and he's hit. pushed out of bounds. Oh, oh. Jonathan Torres nice, for Durfee stepping up. Nice clean hit there for the Hilltoppers. That's definitely going to regain positive energy going on the Durfee sidelines as this young Durfee defense comes out with eight sophomores starting. However, I, there is believed to be a penalty marker on the field if, I, if, if, if I see what I see here is correct. Charles Ashley speaking with New Bedford head coach Dennis Golden. I would think this has to be on the return team. On the return team, excuse me. Um, going back to that hit, wow, that's some great defense. Once again, you know, New Bedford trying to run up the sidelines. And that is an offsides there for the Hilltoppers on the kick. Mm. Now in that regard, it is a five yard penalty. So they'll march five off. They had the option there, but they, they elected the field position. So it's going to be a first down and 10 for the New Bedford Whalers from the 39 yard line. I'm sorry, from the 34 yard line, their own 34 setting back is number 15, Mike Raposa, incomplete pass, solid, solid pass coverage there for New Bedford, but also a few white jerseys for Durfee, giving pressure on number 15, Mike Raposa. Definitely, Jonathan Torres in the mix again, and also Spencer Borden playing on both sides of the football, a great captain, uh, playing the offense and defense, a, you know, multi-tooled uh, player. So once again, the Hilltoppers, the defense stepping up, and you're right, this young team, they're very aggressive, and that's been part, I think sometimes that can be their downfall as well, because they play so aggressive, sometimes they, they don't stay within themselves, and in this game, they're doing very well. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go with the clock running, another good stop there. Tackle made by Durfee's number 37 there for Durfee making the tackle. That would be Brad Kilby, sophomore, 170 pounds, sophomore for, for Durfee making the tackle there, and it's a good story there for sophomore Brad Kilby. I actually had the opportunity to coach him at the Four of a Falcon level when he was coaching Four of a Falcons, and he was an unbelievable, quiet, clean, hard-nosed football kind of kid. The, the, the product of football players that Durfee in the past years uh, has become accustomed to bringing out. So a solid Durfee player, and Durfee definitely has an ace in the hole for years to come. And look at that, and he even, he helped them drive New Bedford back a yard, so it's actually a third and 11 coming up. Third this is big. Third and 11, Mike Raposa sets to pass the ball, and he's, and it is a incomplete pass intended for number seven for the New Bedford Whalers. No flags on the play. Durfee forcing a three and out after the touchdown. That is huge. These guys came to play this morning, Cliff. Number seven, Corey Barboza was the intended target there for Mike Raposa. Incomplete, and again, Evan, we discuss so often how important it is for field position, maintaining good field position, and this Durfee defense has done just that these last two drives. I am so impressed right now that Coach, jo Coach Jones has, ha has brought this team in completely prepared for this game. And you know, the Whalers, they could be feeling a little defeated as well. This game is for pride right now. High kick. A fair catch called by number two, Isaiah Slowick. He does pounce on the ball too to avoid any further movement there. So it's gonna be a first down and 10 for the Hilltoppers. We're looking at six minutes and 10 seconds to go. It is the Hilltoppers ahead of this ball game so far, 14 to 12. Good field position coming up for this drive now. They look to try to run down the clock. The Hilltoppers will get uh, the ball back at the half because they kicked off to open the game. But you know, going back to uh, New Bedford as well, this game being for pride, uh, because New Bedford also got beat by Brockton. Brockton won the big three. So this game is for bragging rights right now. And yeah. Durfee is definitely playing on all cylinders. Snap goes to number seven, Quinton Souza. He's pouncing around, dancing around, and he has nowhere to go, and he's tackled by New Bedford. First sack for either side. Hector, Hector Diaz in the mix there for the Whalers. Going to be credited with the sack on that, so a loss of about five for the Hilltoppers. So the loss of five brings it to a second down and long second and about 15. That's going to place the ball at just about the 38, shy the 38-yard line there for the Durfee Hilltoppers, a drive that started at the 
44 yard line for Durfee. Second down. They break the huddle a little tighter than they usually do. So Durfee definitely doing something a little bit different here. They put number two, Isaiah Slowick in motion. And this Durfee offensive line needs to wake up a little bit because a lot of pressure is given there by number seven, Quinton Souza. So, so Evan, the last few drives for the offensive line has been quite successful. Definitely good pass coverage there for Durfee the last couple drives. And we'll see in the replay here that the pass protection is definitely lacking this drive. Yeah, definitely. Offensive line not stepping up because penetration these last two snaps. Somehow, somehow Sousa is able to sneak away and actually gain some yards. So instead of a third and 15 or maybe even a third and 20 plus yards, it's going to be a third and 11 because he was able to break free. Third and 11 from the 42 yard line. They I'm looking for Michael Correa here to have a big play. And Michael Correa sets up on your far side left. Quinton Souza looks to him, but doesn't look like he has room. He's going to try to take it himself, and he has to throw it out of bounds. Yeah, incomplete there. And now you have to wonder, they're pretty pushed back, and you don't want to give up too many points to New Bedford in the last few minutes of the first half. But Durfee doesn't punt. So would you say this is a fourth down situation, Cliff? It is a fourth down situation. Durfee has not had a tendency to punt much so far this season, but I think, Evan, from a coaching perspective, it, it might be a wise choice to do you know, how important field position and how close this football game is so far. Thanksgiving morning here at Paul Walsh Field. Four minutes, 30 seconds to go and in the second quarter. Fourth down and 11. It looks like they are punting. They here. will be. Spencer Borden is in the backfield ready to kick it away to New Bedford. Very high a punt. high but not a successful punt there. And it didn't have a favorable bounce as it bounced sideways towards New Bedford sidelines, uh, being downed at the 47, 48 yard line. So very good field position for the Whalers as they'll look to try to run out the clock here in the final minutes of the second half. And we're uh, first half, excuse me. And we're talking final minutes, four minutes and about 15 seconds to go in the first half of football here. 14 to 12, the Hilltoppers on top, and they've maintained the lead so far this whole quarter. I believe, am I accurate with that? Yes, yeah, so far. Yeah, I believe they opened the, they opened the quarter with the scoring play. And this Durfee, young Durfee defense needs to step up again, and they have done nothing but that so far this game. So New Bedford breaks their huddle. As always, led by their quarterback, Mike Raposa. He's going to take it himself. He options it to number 12. That's a live football, and it is caught and is recovered. I'm sorry, not caught by number 12, Mike LeJoy. They try the option there, but it was un were not successful. And that's going to set New Bedford back, a game that we talk about how important field position is here. Definitely. It's going to be a second down and a long that's going to be about... Lost seven yards on that. It's about a seven-yard loss there. Yeah, that hurts the whale. You know... Right now, it's about time management. Got to be careful. It's a close game, and to do something like that where the football could come loose, as you said, lateral, it's a live ball. That's a pretty dangerous situation, especially late in the game. 15, Mike Raposa, the, the, the senior quarterback, breaks the huddle with a spread offense. 82 sets up on our far side left. Seven on your far side right. He takes it himself. That's about a yard gain, two yard gain there, if any, there for New Bedford. It is a third down, a third down and a long third down there for the New Bedford Whalers. Looking at a third and five, he grabbed two yards on that run. Maybe third and just a little shy of five yards, so. Uh, it's actually it's actually gonna be a third down and long. I know where our, where our view here is from the press box. We look like we have a double stakes here. So it's actually a third down and long. Third and officially 14, Cliff. Yes, there we go. Third and down in 14. You need to pardon us because we are in the uh, the nosebleed section of the press box here at Paul Walsh Field. Yeah. They usually take these, the Durfee fellas, and put us up back. But you know what? It's okay because <laughs> we're, we're still... We're still covering it to the best of our abilities, yeah, and that's absolutely. all that We're matters. thrilled to be here. You know, this is such, we talked about in the open, we've talked about it throughout this game, the tradition. That's what this is all about, the rivalry, the tradition of these games on Thanksgiving Day. And this not the only one going on today. We have a quick break in the action. Yeah, there's two other Fall River teams, Diamond Regional playing at home against New Bedford Folk, and Bishop Conley also playing at home today, hosting Pope John Paul II. Uh, I believe they're from Hyannis. Uh, so definitely, you know, a lot of rivalry games. This is what Thanksgiving's all about. It's football. That's what 
that's what everybody looks forward to Thanksgiving morning. A game that has been played since 1909 continues to get underway here at New Bedford High School's Paul Walsh Field. New Bedford does break their huddle and a timeout is taken by the Durfee Hilltoppers. Another timeout and while we have a moment, in case you don't know this at home, Fred TV and the Government Channel. We are producing a weekly magazine style news show. It's been airing since May, Common Thread News, which airs every Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. on Channel 18, the Government Channel, that's FRG TV. And you have Jean Corey and Michael Crane, the news anchors, along with myself, sports producer and sports anchor. And it's been a great thing to have because Fall River hasn't had a cable news show in about eight or nine years. So we're bringing that back to the city and it's been going strong for six months and we hope you tune in this Sunday. Um, actually, I'm sorry, in two Sundays because right now we're we're off the air for a couple weeks, but in two Sundays we'll be back on the air and uh, continue to bring you guys some great stuff. And we're also going to be bringing you Operation Christmas Telethon next weekend, which is exciting stuff as always. So we're going to be talking more about that during halftime as well. And we hope you can join us first weekend of December for Thanksgiving football. So Mike Raposa takes it himself, and he's met by number 22, Raheem Barzi. There is a not a there's a bean bag on the field. I apologize. They have the orange bean bags. Does the officials, the NFL officials, do carry the blue ones? So if if you if you throw that down a little quickly, <laughs> yeah. it looks like there was a penalty marker, but no such luck there. Big and play. another excellent, excellent, excellent defensive drive there for the Hilltoppers. Yeah. Fourth down and long. Check this out. Durfee all over him. Is that Barzi 22? Looked like Barzi in the mix there. Uh, just a big, big defensive play. New Bedford's going to have to punt, but, you know, getting back to Common Thread as well, we want to remember as well, one of the best segments of the show, we have Gary Lee. He does a special Maiden Fall River segment every week. It's towards the end of the show, so Gary also producing some great stuff. It's a great show. Be sure to tune in Sundays at 730. Oh, boy. That is a live football. It is muffed by number 18, Michael Carrere. Let's see who pulls out on top, and it appears to be the Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers do pull out on top there, and how scary that would have been. That would have given New Bedford excellent field position there. That so was potentially devastating. Uh, the football juggled and lost, but then recovered by the Hilltoppers. This this could be a big drive, because if the Hilltoppers can run out the clock here and not give it back to New Bedford, they're getting it back at the half as well. And you so can see that was two straight offensive drives. And you can see that was muffed by number 18, Michael Correa for yes. the Hilltoppers, but very well, keeping an eye on a swivel and an eye on the football was Durfee there recovering it. So first down and 10 for the Hilltoppers from the 35 yard line. Number seven, Quinton Susan, just gonna take the run himself and he's gonna be successful. He's gonna move the ball to about the 47, 43 yard line. I'm sorry, 43. I have, I'm ahead of myself there. 43 yard line first, it's gonna be a second down. They need about two yards there, does Durfee. Yeah, I really like that play there because the Hilltoppers have passed a lot and that's they've probably passed more in this game than they did in 90% of their other games this season. So seeing uh, Susan take the ball himself, that that's a nice way to change things up as you're trying to, again, you wanna keep the clock moving. We're coming up on 90 seconds left. So now this is where you try to Quick slants to the outside to stop the clock so you can keep driving down the field. Kobe Cabral sets up on our far side right. Michael Carrera on your far side left. Snap goes to number seven, Quinton Souza, and he is met by a slew of New Bedford Whalers. Number 54. Didn't for, want to go down. <laughs> number 54 for New Bedford. That will be Antono Guamali for the New Bedford Whalers. That is a loss there for Durfee. That's going to set him to a third down and a third down and about six there from the spot the official brings us. It is a full timeout taken by the New Bedford Whalers. Yeah, Souza there just didn't want to go down. He had like four or five Whalers all over him and he was able to uh, sneak away and at least keep it within reason here. A third and uh, six coming up. One minute and nine seconds left now in the first half. What are your uh, thoughts, Cliff, on this first half while we have the break? Well, I, you know, for, from my perspective, it is encouraging to definitely see the Hilltoppers come out with a solid, solid offensive drive. That has been something that the Hilltoppers, as we mentioned in the open and throughout different courses of the game, have, have been met with a 354 to 88 spread so far this year. Yes. Therefore, they, they have not been quite successful when scoring. They've been outscored. Uh, the Hilltoppers have 
been devastated on the offensive side of the football. So uh, it's encouraging to see, and it is even more encouraging for this program and the future of this program with this very young, young, Durfee defense. And what do they have so far shown us so far today? So they break the huddle with Michael Carrera on our far side right. Durfee's highest offensive points uh, total on the season. They scored 19 back in, I think it was week two. So they score one more touchdown. They're already going to exceed that on Thanksgiving morning. They'd have 20 points on the board. Right now, 14 to 12 as we're on just about at a minute to play. With a minute to play, that was a completed pass to number two, Isaiah Slowick for the Hilltoppers. That is the senior 145 pound senior number two gives the Hilltoppers their first down with about 56 seconds to go. We hope you can continue to join us. We're gonna have some guests here at the half. We're gonna be bringing them to you and interviewing some guests. Joining us will be Durfee Athletic Director, Vic Pereira, so we'll get his insight on the, the scramblings of this game so far. Quinton Souza moving around in the backfield and it is an incomplete pass overthrown to number two, Isaiah Slowick. We also wonder there if the sun is in his eyes that time. Yeah, high skies today, we, we were expecting clouds uh, for most of the morning, and it's turned into an absolutely beautiful day for football. Uh, we've seen much worse conditions on Thanksgiving morning we uh, have. from here and in, and in Durfee. Uh, so this is definitely the sun. It's cool, but the dryness, a welcome sight. And uh, I, I recall uh, the last time the Hilltoppers were here, and I was covering this game, I'm doing some sideline reporting, uh, we were talking downstairs in the truck before we, before we got up here today. It was like, you know, I had hand warmers in my ears because it was so <laughs> cold. It was, it was pretty yeah, bad. Brutal. But the last two Thanksgiving football games have been blessed. We've been blessed with great weather. And it is a penalty marker on the field. It is a dead ball penalty. Let's see what Probably referee Charles Ashley start. has to say. Probably looking at a false start here. And it oh, is against the New Bedford Whalers as they encroach the line of scrimmage. It is a five yard penalty. It will remain second down. That's gonna help the Hilltoppers. Uh, that's gonna be the, that's gonna make the Hilltoppers second in about five. Thanks Charles Ashley for giving us the call on that one. So. And not only, it stops the clock. It also so that also does, helps. It also stops the clock and it will go on the snap with 30 seconds to go. It's roughly 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. The Hilltoppers on top, 14 to 12, and let's see the results here as Kobe Cabral breaks the huddle with the Hilltoppers. On their far side left, Michael Carrera on your far side right to his left is number two, Isaiah Slowick. However, they would like the, we have a referee timeout here and he's telling the clock operator to put 32 seconds on the clock. Three, two as the clock does show 30 seconds. Dennis Golden just looked, New Bedford coach looking for a little bit of an explanation as to why the clock has been stopped. So well, it actually started moving when the ball was placed on the field coming out of the uh, the flag, uh, coming out of the penalty, and that was, uh, they were not calling for that to start at the moment, so it actually ran two seconds. So that's why they're trying to correct that um, so we can get an accurate time on the clock. And they do that as the Hilltoppers have a second down and about four yards to go. Raheem Barzi meets his quarterback in the backfield, the only two fellows in the backfield this time. Number two. Oh, what a leaping grab what there a great by Barzi. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Number 22, Raheem Barzi on the completion there for Durfee. It is going to be a gain of about. Actually, like, it's like no gain, but. Minimal gain there for Durfee. Yeah. Gain of about a yard. Let's give him a yard. So it's going to be third down and four. And it appears the Hilltoppers are just going to let the clock run out and go into the half with a 14 to 12 lead. Five seconds, they may get the snap off. They're hurrying. Two, and one, and they get they, the snap. One they, last play. And they get the snap off. They go long to number 18, Michael Carrere. And it is complete, but it is not enough time to continue this. He does catch it in bounds. And as a result of that, we go into halftime, which has been the first time this season the Hilltoppers go into the half with the lead. So we go into the half with the lead here at Paul Walsh Field. It is 14 to 12 Hilltoppers. How Unbelievable. Now we, we were speaking and, 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 and somebody to my side, I think <laughs> predicted a score here. I think you might have to stand corrected there, yeah. Evan. Well, that's why we call it a prediction. We go based <laughs> on the facts and you know, based on what we've seen this season and Durfee coming into the game 0-9 
We certainly didn't expect this. I don't think anybody did, especially from the New Bedford side. Definitely from the New Bedford side. De uh, New Bedford probably looking at things a little bit differently here. Definitely. Uh, as, as they would, um, you know, coming into this game, I'm sure a lot of people were saying, oh, this is going to be a cakewalk for New Bedford. A lot of people here in the press box discussing that prior to this game. Uh, and it certainly has not been that. Durfee has come out playing clean, hard-nosed, aggressive football, aggressive football up front, aggressive football on the offense and defensive line. And their secondary has done very well keeping uh, quarterback Mike Raposa, you know, not ma making his goal, I guess, so far. Yeah, today. that's for sure. They've really kept him under control. A lot of plays in the backfields for negative yardage. Uh, the, the Whalers have a lot to think about going into the half and a lot to uh, try to sort out in the locker rooms uh, as we do go into halftime. Hilltoppers, they need to just keep doing what they're doing. They, they're doing very well, and they didn't allow any points in this second quarter. That was huge. And, and not only staying on top of things, but it's also going to... Uh, they have to remain consistent here. Yes. Uh, you know, don't try to do too much. You know, the the New England Patriots head coach, you can often tell through his press conferences, also says, you know, if everybody does their job and does their job to the best of their ability, and Durfee, a program who's been enriched with playing clean, hard-nosed football for many, many years, has been something that we're going to hopefully will remain and stay consistent here at, at Durfee High School. So That's for sure. we have halftime here at... New Bedford High School, Paul Walsh Field, Cliff Ponty and Evan Massoud bringing you the coverage. We're going to step away for a brief timeout. We're going to we're going to ask you to continue to join us as we continue to give you great coverage here. The Thanksgiving morning, we're going to have some guests, including Durfee High School Athletic Director Vic Pereira will join us shortly as well. So stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. Going into the half, the Hilltoppers have a 14-12 lead from Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford High School. And thank you for joining us once again at Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford. Going into the half, the Hilltoppers have a 14 to 12 lead, and it is definitely something that we're all excited about here. And, and, and you know, we're joined here by School Committee Man Mark Costa. Uh, Mark, what are your thoughts so far of today's game? Well, I can tell you that. Uh, first of all, let me say Happy Thanksgiving to you, Cliff, and Evan, and uh, all the listeners out there in the Greater Fall River community. Uh, today's a great day. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything different. Uh, it's Durfee and New Bedford football. Uh, this is what it's about. Uh, kids coming out here, some for their last time on the field, and uh, I, I give a lot of credit to this Durfee team who, coming into this game, you know, didn't have the most successful time in terms of wins and losses, but uh, they're putting it all out in the field today, and uh, they got the crowd uh, really ramped up on the Durfee side. Absolutely. Definitely. And you know, Mark, some may be kicking me for, for my predictions. <laughs> he <laughs> actually predict prediction. he actually had a pretty strong prediction in the beginning of this game, but we've already forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, I predicted a 37-18 New Bedford win, and that's, you know, anything can happen, but right now it's not looking like that. What are your predictions, do you think, for the second half? Well, I, I tell you, if they can continue to do the things they did in the first half, they're throwing the ball well, uh, you know, th th they're completing passes, moving the ball, their defense has, has really stepped it up. I think if they stick to those uh, types of fundamentals in the second half, uh, Durfee may be on its way to its uh, to its first win this season. And uh, you know, to Coach uh, Jones and his staff and the kids, you know, these kids come out here day in and day out and work hard. Um, and today, you know, I'm, I'm just hopeful that uh, at the end of this game, they'll have an opportunity to celebrate. And if they don't win, they should certainly celebrate because they put it all out in the field and they're doing a great job and they're representing this Greater Fall River area very well. You know, Mark, we, we were discussing in the open and throughout different parts of the game today with Evan and I, uh, we, we were discussing how, you know, the records really don't mean so, so much on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, a lot of it has to do, and, and even the younger classmen, Durfee starting eight sophomores on defense, we, we, we're continuing to bring that topic up. You know, it's very important, I'm sure, for you to mention and probably for us to talk about uh, the dedication, the work ethic from the players to the coaches, uh, for the amount of work that they put into this football season. And no matter what the record and no matter what the, what the result is, as a former football player myself, I was always taught 
put it all and leave it all on the field. How important is it? It's very important. And this is more than just X's and O's on a football field. This is about showing young men on the field what they're going to need to accomplish in life. And that's teaching them hard work pays off. That's teaching them commitment to their teammates, respect of the game, respect of their, their competitors. Those are all things that throughout life they're going to have to use to be successful. And, you know, it, it's being displayed here today. Uh, it's being led by the coaching staff, and these kids are doing a real nice job. And like you said, it, it's any given day, but on Thanksgiving it's special. Absolutely. And especially for those seniors who are leaving it out in the field. And for the young upperclassmen who are coming up through the ranks, who are looking for that special moment when they get to be senior. So uh, I'm thrilled to be here. They're doing well. I hope they keep up the good work. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mark, for joining us. We, I'm sure we'll see you first weekend of December next weekend for Operation Christmas Telethon. Uh, thank you for coming up and joining us, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, we're going to be bringing you, continue to bring you coverage here of Thanksgiving football from Paul Walsh Field, and it is appreciated that you stay around for another half because we've got an exciting football game so far, and I'm sure it's going to be just as exciting next half. Cliff Ponte, Evan Massoud, bringing you coverage of Thanksgiving football right here at Paul Walsh Field. We'll be back in just a few moments. And welcome back to Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford. New Bedford High School, we're bringing you coverage of Thanksgiving morning football, already afternoon here, but uh, morning football was a long first half we were talking about. So, you know, there, there wasn't many penalties. The Hilltoppers and the New Bedford Whalers both equal possession uh, going into the uh, third quarter here. But uh, big, big start here for Durfee. It's yeah. very important that the Hilltoppers come out strong as they did... Um, New Bedford won the toss, and they elected to receive. Hilltoppers will be on the receiving end of the football. How important is a good uh, drive for the Hilltoppers? Well, it's huge because they had, you know, they were driving to end the first half, and you know they just ran out of time because they they finished the half with a 40-yard completion to Michael Correa, who I'm going on a limb right now, win or lose, he's the MVP for the Hilltoppers in this game because mm -hmm. he's been absolutely phenomenal. The sophomore, only two years at Durfee, two more years to play, hopefully, and. Uh, Durfee needs to come out and score. It's that simple. They played with all the momentum in that second quarter. They didn't allow New Bedford to score. They need to come out with that same intensity, with also with staying within themselves. That's also important. But they need to play with intensity. Also, kudos goes to this Dur uh, Durfee defense, this young Durfee defense who has done very, very well so far. That's for sure. Uh, this ball game. So we're going to bring you back to the field of play here momentarily, and we are underway in just a few seconds here as... Number 15, Michael Raposa for New Bedford. Sets to kick. And we're ready to play the second and half. We are ready to play. And we are underway. We have the Hilltoppers, number 22, Raheem Barzi picks it up. It's going to be a first down and 10 for the Hilltoppers, shy of the 30. Yeah, not a bad run back there for the Hilltoppers. They're going to be, uh, actually, the ball spotted, uh, yeah, literally, like, just just missing the 30. Um, so pretty good field position to start this off for the Hilltoppers. So good field position is what we spoke about earlier, Evan, and how important is it for the Hilltoppers to take full advantage of good field position and maintaining the time of the football. So they break out with Colby Cabral on your far side left and Michael Carrera on your far side right, taking it himself his quarterback number seven, Quinton Souza. And that is about a eight-yard gain or thereabouts. He's slow to stand back up, but he gets right back up and brushes the dirt off and gets back to lead the huddle for the Durfee Hilltoppers. That's a gain of about seven there for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, you're going to see on your screen right here that um, I thought we were going to replay. It looks like we're, we're not. Um, but Souza took a face plant there, and that's why he was a little slow to get up. Maybe jarred him a little bit. Um, again, we want to thank New Bedford Cable for providing us with the pictures today. They're doing a great job. Uh, they're giving us the feed this, uh, this morning, now going into afternoon. So we thank them for their cooperation. The snap does go to number two, Isaiah Slowick for the Hilltoppers. That is a gain of about, about a yard or two, a short yard there for the Hilltoppers. It is a third down. Hilltoppers need three. Interesting to see their philosophy right now, Evan, as they have been quite successful uh, passing the football 
not quite successful with their run game. Yeah, that's for sure. I thought Barzi would be a really big playmaker in this, and he hasn't seen much action. The senior running back, the captain, one of the four for the Hilltoppers. They got a third and two coming up, and uh, I'd really like to see them get this first down with a pass to maybe Michael Correa, who's been so invaluable so far. Third down and two. We are in the third quarter, nine minutes, 24 seconds to go. They pass the ball to number four, Spencer Borden. He gets outside, but he's stuffed by a few New Bedford Whalers. Leading that pack was number seven for New Bedford. That is Corey Barboza. Also number 14, Chandler DeBrosi for New Bedford. Yeah, that really just did not work out for New Be uh, for Durfee, rather. New Bedford worked out very well. They actually pushed the Hilltoppers back four yards. So now a fourth and six, way back in New Bedford territory, you have to think that the Hilltoppers will have to punt. This would be their second punt, not something that the Hilltoppers usually do. But in this case, again, it's a close game. Um, this is, you know, this was a big stop for the Hill, uh, for the Whalers, excuse me, because they needed to get the ball back. They're trailing in this one. So Durfee coming out a little lack lackadaisical. A fair catch is called by New Bedford's number 12, Mike LaJoy, their junior, their senior running back, 165 pound running back. There is a penalty marker on the field. We're going to look to Charles Ashley for the call. Most definitely, I was waiting for that because Spencer Borden went down in the backfield to kick her. We will so that see. should give the Hilltoppers, if it's a personal foul, that should give the Hilltoppers a first down. That would make this punt null and void. And that, you are absolutely correct. It would be first down. That is a penalty from the spot of the foul. That was a great punt by Borden, but he got he went down in the back, and the, the flag is still there. And Charles Ashley, the referee, speaking with Coach Jones as to what direction he wants to go here. This should be a first down for Durfee. They should main, maintain possession of this football. New Bedford head coach Dennis Golden calming his men down, saying don't get too worked up, just do your job, do your job. And we look to Charles Ashley for the call, and I have yet to see one. Well, it's gonna be a fourth and one. And it is roughing the kicker against the New Bedford Whalers as a result that does not give them the first down. No. That gives them first down in about a yard to go. But they're going to go they, for And it. they break out in a shotgun formation with Kobe Cabral on your far side left and Carrera on your far side right. Number seven, Quentin Sousa takes it, but he is... He's got it. Met by New Bedford, but it all depends on where the ball is placed here. And as a result, it is a first down for the Hilltoppers. He grabbed two on that. New Bedford all over Souza, and somehow he's able to run around them and power it forward. That was huge for the Hilltoppers, taking advantage of the penalties. Penalties can make or break this game. You're gonna see the replay on your screen. Look at the Whalers, all over him, almost tackled him, somehow stays on his feet. The knee goes down just after the first down marker, and the Hilltoppers maintain possession of their drive. And the forward possession gives the Hilltoppers a first down from the what's looking to be the 40 yard line out of the shotgun formation is Quentin Sousa scrambling around he has no option but to throw the ball away and his vicinity was number 20 Kobe Cabral good choice there to throw it away in the vicinity of a player so you don't get calls for intentional grounding we saw that a few a few weeks back a questionable call so that was a good choice though because if he would gotten sacked he would have lost about 15 yards and as a result of that, we're looking at a second down here for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Ball is shy of the 40-yard line. Haven't used Michael Correa yet in the second half. They haven't, but they break out with the same spread offense with Kobe Cabral on your far side left, Michael Correa on your far side right, and Raheem Barzi, the only running back in the backfield. And Quinton Souza is just running all over the place, and it is intercepted by New Bedford. Number seven, that is going to be Corey Barboza in water. An awful set of circumstances there for the Hilltoppers as they were. As Quinton Souza did a great job there running out of the pocket, there was some pressure on him, as you can see here. But uh, New Bedford uh, takes it away with their second turnover of the game. Yep, Sousa's second interception of this morning, now going again into afternoon. Second interception of the game, and that one really hurts because you look like you're gonna give the ball back to New Bedford. The roughing the kicker, they get the first down conversion, so they're on their way. And yeah, tons of pressure put on by the Whalers to the quarterback, and 
the pat the uh, the pick thrown. So the Whalers get the ball back. They hand the ball off to number 12, Mike LaJoy for New Bedford. He does a reasonable uh, gain there for the New Bedford Whalers, a gain of about three to four yards there or so. We'll see where they place the ball, and there's going to be a second down and about five, a second and a long five there for the New Bedford Whalers. Ball is placed shy of the 45-yard line, closer to the 44-yard line there for the New Bedford Whalers. Yeah, not a bad run. He faked the handoff to, um, it looked like, Number 14 was running this way, running to the near side, and LaJoy took the ball. They open out in a spread formation with wide receivers to their first side left and their far side right. And it is an incomplete pass and almost intercepted by number 22, wow. Raheem Barzi. And you see the Durfee sideline jump, squint, and say, oh, oh my goodness. And that's really? exactly what we were doing up here, too. In incomplete pass. Uh, but almost intercepted by number 22, Raheem Barzi. Exciting stuff here for the Hilltoppers, third down and a long six. Yeah, check this out. The pass going to the far side, and, and Barzi somehow was unable. To, it, it was right within his fingertips, just unable to grab it. I mean, you know, we, we cheer in for Durfee. We're biased. We are the Fall River crew. Oh, We'd yeah. love to see Durfee not have a winless season. So there's a lot riding on this game, and uh, the turnover there, Barzi had a lot of room to run up that sideline. We could have been looking at a 20 to 12 score. We bleed the colors of Durfee football here on Fred TV. Number 15, Mike Raposa takes a snap and he is met by number four. That is an incomplete pass. Great that defense is an incomplete there. Incomplete pass and great defense there Spencer by the Borden. Hilltoppers number four, Spencer Borden meeting their wide receiver and running back number 12, Mike LaJoy. So a fourth and six. They are in Durfee territory, but again, a close game. You've got to wonder, would you give the ball back at this spot or should you punt and try to bury the Hilltoppers deep into their, their, uh, their territory? And a game that is so important with field position, time, and control of the football, it appears that they are punting. And set back for the Hilltoppers is number 18, who has been the star of this football game. Michael Carrere, number two, also for the Hilltoppers set, set back. Good punt. A fair catch is called by number 18, Michael Carrer. Isaiah Slowick, number two, catches the ball there for the Hilltoppers. So good job there for the New Bedford Whalers, bringing the Hilltoppers deep in their own territory here as they start their drive, this drive, with six minutes and 37 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hilltoppers on top right now, 14 to 12 in this third quarter on Paul Waltz Field here in New Bedford talk about how good the Whalers punt was well even better the Hilltoppers defense because the defense once again coming up with a big stop you turn the ball over and it didn't matter because now the Hilltoppers have the ball back they have a long way to go first and 10 from the 10 so they have to drive 90 yards for a score but so they have a long way to go and they could definitely you know take a lot of time off the clock so we're looking at Spencer Borden leading the Hilltoppers onto their huddle here. He looks to pass it, but he's met, and he is met by a few New Bedford Whalers leading that sack there was number 42 for the New Bedford Whalers. That will be Tyler Jacobs. Yeah, Tyler that was Jacobs. a loss of five there for the, uh, the Hilltoppers. As a, As a result of such, it is going to be a timeout taken by the Durfee Hilltoppers, a full team timeout. Coach Jones getting his crew together to regroup here, freshen up with a sip of water, and uh, hopefully come out and execute a solid offensive attack this drive here, Evan. Definitely, Cliff. They need to get some yards. The offense uh, scuffling just a little bit here to start the second half, not as sharp as they were. And it could be New Bedford making some adjustments as well. And that's not something, you know, that would be uncommon that's what you do at the half you go back to the locker room and you have a team meeting and you try to make some adjustments on the football on both sides of the football defense and offense and the Hilltoppers offense what was clicking for the first half isn't clicking quite so well to start the second half here so they need to gain some yards because if they get forced to punt from the end zone it's going to be pretty difficult to overcome we talk a lot about consistency Evan we talk about how important it is for the Hilltoppers to say stay consistent on the offensive side of the football we talk about how important it is for them to maintain their ground and do their jobs on the defensive side of the football. It's very important uh, that, you know, we're not playing flag football. I'm sure Coach Jones emphasized that at the halftime. Be aggressive. 
uh, you know, make sure your hands are where they should be and make sure your head's to the football at all times here. So very important, little mechanics, people doing the little things is what's going to set the difference and be the ending result of this game. So the Hilltoppers deep in their own territory at about the five-yard line is a second down and long for the Hilltoppers. Quinton Souza takes the ball. He's in his own end zone, and he throws the ball out. It is an incomplete pass. That really, that could have been a safety. That was very close. He was close to being sacked in the end zone, which would have given New Bedford two points to tie the game and also would have given them the ball back. So it would have given them the ball back, but fortunately, number 22, Raheem Barzi, was in the area, which, which you know, as you know, a very popular call there. Yeah. If there was no eligible receiver in the area, that would have been a safety. Yes, that would have been devastating for the Hilltoppers because, again, it not only ends their drive, but it also gives the New Bedford Whalers points. Absolutely right, and gives them possession of the football. But right now, the Hilltoppers in full possession. They're in their five. They're looking at a third down and long deep in their own territory. They spread their offense out third and like they 16. have been most of the game. Quinton Souza in his own territory looks to number four for the wow. Hilltoppers, and he is going all the way out to the 45-yard line. However, he fumbles it when he's down. There's no whistle. Taking it back is number 42. That's for just the terrible. New Bedford Whalers, that's Tyler Jacobs. Spencer Borden really feeling it, just finally getting up. Number that, that was incredible what just happened. Number four, Spencer Borden fumbles the ball after a solid, solid run. He that would have brought the 50 yards on that and going down on the tackle, losing the football. That would have brought the that would have brought us out to the 45 yard line. And let's take a look at that, Evan. Oliver with a heck of a pass. Great reception by Borden in stride across the field. And we'll see what happens going down. The ball just gets stripped. Had nothing, had no control. And the New Bedford fan base waking up a little bit for the first time today. Wow, what a shame, because Durfee had things going there. And and if we, if we had instant replay here, I'm sure Coach Jones would have thrown the flag there, because if you look at the replay there a few moments ago, it appears that he was down. But unfortunately, Absolutely. unfortunately those set of circumstances do not apply here at this level of football quite yet. If these gentlemen do decide to go to the next level you'll see that at the college level but not at the high school level unfortunately i know kip in here waiting waiting for the uh for the whistle to be blown because his knee was down and uh unfortunately and you saw it at home his knee was down so that was the play was dead and met number 12 there for the new bedford whalers number 12 mike lajoy is met by a plethora of durfee hilltoppers leading that was number 74 for the durfee hilltoppers he was there, and, and we give credit there to Kendrick Dixon for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Also meeting him was senior defensive lineman Manny Fernandes. So it's very important here for the Hilltoppers to stay consistent on defense. They're looking at third down, a third down and five, shy five or so. We have four minutes, 30 seconds. The clock is running here. This is a huge, huge play for the Hilltoppers defense. These next two are very important. They need to be very focused on what they're doing. The handoff goes to number 12, Michael Joy, and he's met by number 74 for the Hilltoppers. That's a loss of two. Number 74, Kendrick Dixon, also meeting him. Number 37, Brad Kilby, the sophomore linebacker, and also give credit to number 76, Cody LaPointe, for being there as well on the tackle for the Hilltoppers. So it's a fourth down, fourth and about six or so. And a timeout is taken by the New Bedford Whale as a full team timeout is taken as coach decides to get his crew together and talk Smart about decision. strategy. Smart decision, Cliff, because right now you're looking at if you kick the ball, it's a 28 yard field goal, give or take. That's not a bad opportunity to take a one point lead here because the way the Durfee Hilltoppers have been defending, the Whalers haven't done much on offense either to this point. So <laughs> if I'm New Bedford, I'd say, let's take our chances and kick the ball because worst case scenario, Durfee recovers shy of the 30, and they still have to march 70-plus yards for a touchdown. And credit needs to be due to this Durfee defense, this young Durfee sophomore defense who is coming out, living it all on the field, bleeding the colors of Durfee High School today, certainly. And a lot of credit needs to be given to this Durfee defense, this young group of Durfee football players who have given it their all. And they are going to kick it. Today, and they're kicking it. 
Mike Raposa. And I wouldn't be surprised here if they do decide to fake it. He is quite athletic. He's done it before already this today. True. This is true. Going to be ready for anything. Number 15. He goes up. The extra point is up. And it is the field good. Goal is good. The three-point conversion is good there for the New Bedford Whalers. And that does put them elite ahead of this game by one point. So we're looking at a score now of 15 to 14 New Bedford. Interesting call there, Evan, from the New Bedford sideline. And I think it's, like I said, I think it's a wise call because, you know, points are at a premium at this point. Both teams' defenses stepping up. And that ball actually just made it over the crossbar. That it was a weak kick, actually, from Raposa. So New Bedford lucky that they were able to actually get the points on that. But nonetheless, New Bedford has a one-point lead, and now Durfee gets the ball back and they really need to just be cautious. They've had three turnovers. New Bedford has not turned the ball over once. That's a big key in this. Turnovers are very important, as we've mentioned. We're gonna to continue to stress to you, as you know, the time of possession is important and how they control the football is equally as important. Turnovers will kill you and will also hurt you uh, tr tremendously, the outcome of this football game. So the Hilltoppers, uh, I'm sorry, the New Bedford Whalers sent to kick number 15, Mike Raposa. Sets a kick for New Bedford. Set deep for the Hilltoppers is 18. Michael Carrere, number two. Isaiah Slowick for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Let's see what kind of offensive attack the Hilltoppers can pull off here as it's very important they stay consistent and do not turn the ball over this drive. It's a very important drive for this Durfee Hilltopper football team. It is, Cliff. You know, they need to stay consistent, but I think that this is the point in the game now. We're, we're about, we're just under four minutes from the final quarter. Durfee needs to change things up a little bit. The looking pass for game a, was working so well earlier in the game. Looking for a solid block, and he gets that by the Hilltoppers, number 75, Jaden Texera, helping number two, Isaiah Slowick, move the ball out to about the 33-yard line as he is tackled out of bounds. And a nice block there by the senior for the Hilltoppers, number 75, Jaden Texera. He is 5'10", 250-pound senior for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Yeah, that was a good run back. Very good run back for the Hilltoppers. So they start with pretty decent field position. And uh, I think they need to start going back to those quick passes to the outside. Because what's happening is, I'm seeing Souza way too much time in the backfield. And by the time he's ready to throw it, the offensive line is gone. Number seven, Quinton Souza breaks the huddle with Michael Carrere in a little tighter of a formation set up on his farthest right. Put number two, Isaiah Slowick, in motion. He sets back, looking what, to a wide open Raheem Barzi, but also to a wide open number two, Isaiah Slowick, who takes the ball out with a very minimal gain there for the Hilltoppers, a gain of about a yard or so, if any, for Durfee. See, another tough play there. The quick passes to the outside are allowing the Hilltoppers to really expand the field. When they're waiting this long, you saw Souza on your screen taking a long time to pass this ball. You see it on your screen now on the replay. Looking left, looking right, fakes it. It gives the defense a chance to really read where you're going. Quick passes, they have to adjust on the fly. Slowick, and that's when the offense plays their best. Slowick needed to move a little farther outside. They break the formation with Carrera on your far side left, Kobe Cabral on your far side right. Accompanying him is number two, Isaiah Slowick. And the New Bedford fan base is on fire, looking for that 12th man on the field. Quinton Souza takes the snap. It is a completed pass to number two, Isaiah Slowick. He moves the ball out to oh, about the 40. <laughs> to about the 45 yard line. I'm sorry, number two, Isaiah Slowick with the completed pass. The clock is moving. That is a Durfee Hilltopper first down. See that? What a difference. Getting the pass off about two seconds sooner, and you have the defense scrambling, and Slowick able to pick up about 10 or 12 yards on that, and they have a first down as they cross midfield. Number two, Isaiah Slowick goes to the sidelines for a little breather. Coming in for the Hilltoppers, checking in is number. 25 for the Hilltoppers. Aaron Tavares, another sophomore. Aaron Tavares, a young sophomore coming out, getting his first action of the football game here today. Career set up on your far side left. Kobe Cabral on your far side right. Raheem Barzi in the backfield. Snap goes to Quinton Suze. He's going to take it himself. He gets solid, solid blocking from this offensive line going into meeting and blocking is number 76, Junior, 5'10", 195 pound guard Cody LaPointe also pulling on that one was number 43 sophomore Alex Benavides. Yeah Sousa got a nice block there he's able to gain about three on that so that's pretty good yardage on a take it yourself run so now a second and seven coming up 
Second down in seven. Hilltoppers break their, for, break their huddle with Carrera on your far side left. Kobe Cabral on your far side right. Raheem Barzi in the backfield. Also checking back into this game is number four, Spencer Borden. And also 25, Aaron Travaris is also uh, in this ball game as well. Taking it himself with a fake to Raheem Barzi is Quinton Souza. And he is tackled out of inbounds, I'm sorry. And that looks to be good for a Hilltopper first down. And they are going to... We haven't got the official yet from Charles Ashley. Let's see after he takes a look with his wingman and linemen exactly what the call is going to be. That looks pretty good from our vantage point. And he might measure this because how close this is. We're not sure, and he is. He is going to take the measurement crew out. That's a smart decision. You want to get it right. You know, again, you said there's no replay, so you can't throw a challenge flag to, to challenge the spot of the ball. So let's just get it right initially, right on the field, get the measurement, and uh, we'll see if Durfee has to grab a couple inches or if they've got the first down. They may be about an inch shy. This, this, It all depends. And they, and it all depends, but it, regardless, we're going to see the result. It will. It is a second down here right now. And let's see what we have for a call. Charles Ashley will be the one giving us the, the call. And have they set the chains? First, it's a down. first down. It is a Hilltopper first down. So that is great movement there for this Durfee offense who are moving the ball nicely so far in this drive. And it's important that they do stay consistent here, Evan. Yes, and you know, Souza, I like him calling his own number or taking the ball two times in a row. They were set up for a pass. They had four wide receivers ready to go. Souza took it himself and made things happen. The playmaker right now for Durfee. So again, a little bit of trickery, but staying within themselves. Very important. We're looking at about a minute to go in the third quarter. This game is just flying right on by. Hilltoppers break the huddle with their common spread offense. Quinton Souza on the snap. And he has met. There's a penalty marker on the field. A few penalties. We see one penalty marker on the field. And this might be against the Hilltoppers. We might see a hold here. See, and he's lucky there was no intentional grounding called on that because there were no Hilltoppers in the vicinity of that football. Charles Ashley speaks to his umpire as trying to find out the result of this play here and how the call will be. While we have a timeout, I want to once again thank you for joining us on Fred TV. Cliff Ponte and myself, Evan Massu, bringing you Thanksgiving Day football from Paul Walsh Field. New Bedford Cable Access, we thank them for their wonderful video feeds today. We're interesting to see the result of this play. The referee speaking to Dennis Golden, New Bedford head coach. The flag marker is still out on the field. And it is a hold against the Durfee Hilltoppers. They have decided to decline the penalty. Also, there was a another penalty there for the Hilltoppers. And that was, it looked like. It looked like to be intentional grounding against the Hilltoppers. They declined the first penalty. They took the intentional grounding penalty. Did not decline that. As a result, it is going to be a second down. Double stakes here for the Hilltoppers. Second down and a long 15 as the ball is placed at about the 30-yard line. Shy of the 30. Quinton Souza in the backfield with his... He is the quarterback with his running back, Raheem Barzi, setting back to number four. Spencer Borden overthrown. Very incomplete overthrown. pass. Third down. Very overthrown there, a little over anxious. Borden didn't get down the sidelines, I think, as quickly as, uh, as uh, Souza thought he would. So now Durfee with a long third down coming up, a third and about 15. A third down, a third down and about 15. Hilltoppers have the ball at about the 50 yard line here. Very important drive here for the Hilltoppers. They have just fell behind a little bit in this football matchup. Less than a minute to play in the third. We have 49 seconds on the clock before we go into the final 11 minutes of this game. They a break, very tight game. They break the huddle with Isaiah Slowick setting up on your far side left and Michael Carrer on your far side right. A timeout has been taken here by the Durfee Hilltoppers. A timeout, it appears to be a 20 second timeout taken by Durfee. Coach Jones didn't like what he saw and he did call a timeout. Yeah, so Souza was turning into the direction of his coach, turning towards the sidelines, talking to him, trying to communicate. So something was amiss there on the offensive formation. And uh, or maybe Coach Jones just saw something in the defense that he didn't quite like and wants to maybe change it up. This is a big play. 
you probably have two downs. Durfee very rarely will punt from midfield. So looking at a two down opportunity, you got to get 15 yards. You're going to need two downs to do it. And 15 yards is an important 15 yards that the Durfee Hilltoppers need here. We're looking at third and 15, 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Hilltoppers are inching closer and inching closer. And they need a first down. This is an important drive here for Durfee because you do not want to turn the ball over to New Bedford. And they pass it to number two, Isaiah Slowick, and it is an incomplete pass. Fell Just right through the me. hands of number two, Isaiah Slowick, the senior, 145 pound senior. Number two, incomplete pass, fourth down. Clock has been stopped with 41 seconds to go. Great defense by Corey Barboza, the also, senior for uh, the Whalers. All also, over him. Also, we want to give a lot of kudos there to the offensive line, giving Quentin Souza plenty of time to pass the ball to Isaiah Slowick. We always forget the offensive line, how important their offensive line is. Uh, and, and, you know, it really makes or breaks a football team. Both sides of the football, your offense and defensive line, really make a big difference. So we're looking at a fourth down and 15 here. A big drive for the Hilltoppers. In worst case scenario here, Evan, they need to set New Bedford back in their own territory and have them work and work and work their way back off the back on their side of the uh, football field here. I have to say that as much as I like the aggressive, I almost would have punted in this case and put New Bedford way back at the goal line and try to get the football back. Well, we'll see the result here. Quentin Souza. Quentin Souza is scrambling for life and he throws the ball to number 20, Colby Cabral. It is an incomplete pass. As a result, it is going to be a first down in 10 for the New Bedford Whalers from the 50. Evan, I'm sure it's going to be questioned later on at the result of this game why the Hilltoppers decided not to punt there. Yeah, at that point in the game, there's just really only one play to make, and that is to punt because you're giving now the Whalers who have a one-point lead, you're giving them back the football right at midfield. That's just... It's not a good recipe to win, so that, that to me was a questionable call. I would have made a different decision, but hey, I'm not coaching this game. And as would I, but it is what it is. It is going to be a first down and 10. A timeout appears to be taken here by the Durfee Hilltoppers. Or a, a penalty flag, marker. Actually. I'm sorry, pardon that. There's a penalty marker on the field. And you know, with the flag, I have to, I have to, to make mention the Hilltoppers. It. On a play like that, we just saw everything that's going on. How are there no flags? There's holds on every play. So how are there no flags on plays like that? That brings into like the officiating questions. You always wonder, because there's so much going on, how can they see everything, right? Abs you're absolutely right, but they do and they make the call and it goes against the Hilltoppers. It gives New Bedford five more yards to work with. The ball is now placed at about the first down. In about five, the, the, the ball does go to number 12 for the New Bedford Whalers. That is Mike LaJoy for New Bedford. Grabbed about a yard on that, so looking at a second and four. Second and four from about the 44 yard line, or they're about shy of the 44. Second down, it's a big drive here, and I, I think I've been saying that for the last 10 drives here for the Hilltoppers <laughs> because every drive, whether they're on the offense or defensive side of the football is equally as important, and a timeout has been taken here by the New Bedford Whalers. So Evan, a game that is so important, and I know we sound redundant, but I guess it's the key ingredient for success here this, this morning or this afternoon, field position. And again, we, we're going to probably question Coach Jones' decision there not to punt the ball because New Bedford could easily be closer to their, their own 30 or their own 40, even if it was not a good punt. That's but sure. instead, they give them solid, solid field position. At My the only 50. thing that I can, the only thing I can think of is maybe they were afraid of a run back and then you're looking at a totally different ball game. So at least at this point, they were trying to be aggressive. And you know, those were a couple of near misses. Um, they, they had plenty of opportunities despite the pressure from the, the pass rush. The Hilltoppers had plenty of opportunities and they had some very close, close opportunities here where they could have converted their first down, the, those third and fourth and longs. So uh, unfortunately, it just didn't happen for them on that drive. We're gonna begin the fourth quarter now as that last play wrapped up the third quarter. We got 11 minutes to play in this one, and it's another nail biter on Thanksgiving morning. So the Whalers quarterback Mike Raposa comes into this game with 14 touchdown passes, which is three short of tying a single season record. And this young Durfee defense, who has played very, very well and consistent so far this game, is looking to stop this. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it's something that's going to happen because I don't see either side scoring three touchdowns in the last 11 minutes. That would be just an incredible feat if it were to happen. Durfee being outscored coming into this game, 354 to 88. No, uh, no team has scored fewer than 34 points against the Hilltoppers, but Evan, numbers really do not matter today. This is true, Cliff. They've only allowed 15, and uh, they'd have to really, really lose and unravel in a hurry if uh, they aren't allowed that many points in this one. So second, a lot of things going right in this one for the Hilltoppers. Second down and three. A timeout has been taken again, I believe, here. Trying to deter. Timeout has been taken by the New Bedford Whalers. A 20-second timeout. Coach didn't like what he saw. He's going to switch things up. So as we get, begin the uh, fourth quarter here, just after 12, coming up on 12.30 Eastern Time. Uh, we once, once again want to thank everybody for tuning in today on Fred TV for our Thanksgiving Day coverage. And we thank New Bedford Cable Access for their cooperation as they're providing us with uh, the beautiful pictures that you're seeing on your screen this afternoon. Also, would like to remind you to join us next weekend, first weekend of December for Operation Christmas Telethon at the Harbor Mall. It's live. We're there all weekend. Also, the Christmas Parade is next Saturday as well. Holidays right around the corner. And a great block there by New Bedford's number four. That's going to bring him deep. It's good. He's going to continue to move his way downfield. That brings him up to about the 20-yard line or thereabouts was number 12, Mike LaJoy. And there was a big block there by number four, Stephen Azor, the 5'9", 175-pound wide receiver and you can see it here yeah that was just uh, a great run he just refused to go down refused to give in tough guy staying on his feet down the sidelines finally tackled by number 41 of the Hilltoppers that's captain uh, Manny Fernandez Manny Fernandez is leading this Durfee defense senior for the Hilltoppers He's a senior, number 41, 5'11", 215 pounds. Number 15, Microposa takes it himself, tackled by number 37, sophomore Brad Kilby for the Hilltoppers, who has played tremendous in this game so far. The young sophomore linebacker. Jeffrey got to be happy with what they're seeing from the young players, uh, especially in this game, because this is the future of the team. The seniors, this is for the seniors, this is it. So the sophomores and the juniors are going to have to carry and fill in over the next couple years. So got to like what you're seeing so far in this game. Second down in six, 10 minutes, 12 seconds to go in this ball game. Thanksgiving morning, Paul Waltzfield, Cliff Ponte, Evan Massoud giving you uh, coverage here. Thanksgiving afternoon, Mike Raposa opens up with a spread offense here, takes the snap. Looks to throw, scrambles to his far side right, and completes the pass. That completed pass does go to number 82 of the New Bedford Whalers. That is Tyrell Rodriguez for the New Bedford Whalers. So that gives them a first down and goal. And Evan, hopefully things aren't falling apart for this Durfee defense. It kind of looks like it so far. And like I said, you know, it could be one of those situations where New Bedford's making adjustments. You're going to see Raposa get a lot of pressure here as the pass rush comes storming at him, and he makes a sidearm toss on the run. Great pass there. That was just really great athleticism. Raposa takes it himself. He scrambles now to his far side left. He's going to try to make the corner of the end zone. He's, He's not pushed going in. out of bounds by number 22, Raheem Barzi, but it is a touchdown. He does make it inside the corner of the end zone, and that gives the, Hilt, the New Bedford Whalers the lead and looks like Coach Golden is going to go for two here. Wow. It didn't look like it from this vantage point. You know, again, we're in the press box. We're looking through some uh, some walls, some pillars here. We are so looking through quite a few pillars up here in the booth, <laughs> to be honest with you. Very difficult to see uh, the corner of the end zone. You see your replay here. Somehow he got the, the arm extended. That's one of those where if I was a coach and we had replay, I'd be throwing the red flag just to get a second look at it. But unfortunately, it is what it is. Yes, yeah, so 21 to 14 now. The Whalers ahead of Durfee, ahead by seven points. And it looks like, as you said, they're probably going for two here as they're lined up at the line. And they, and they open it up with a penalty marker on the field, probably a delay of game here for the New Bedford Whalers. We'll see what Charles Ashley has to say. That may uh, change the decision. And actually, he's going to wave the flag. There is no penalty marker on the field as a result of such. So this Whalers team 
has been potent offensively, I'm sure, Evan, the fact that they did not have their star uh, wide receiver today playing for them certainly made a difference in their offensive attack and their game plan. Yeah, I would tend to say so. Anytime that you lose a star player, uh, it's going to have effects on, on, the on the team as a whole. Never mind just offense or defense, just in general because you're missing one of your, your playmakers. So that, that's a big deal. Um, I'm not sure what happened on that last play. I, I always wonder that when they pick up a flag, why did you throw it in the first place? But, <laughs> but you know, seriously, if you thought there was a penalty, there must be something going on. But uh, nonetheless, New Bedford features comes into this ball game with a solid run attack. We haven't, which we've seen much of, you know, tailored by their quarterback Mike Raposa. Mike LaJoy has enjoyed 11 touchdowns this season. Kevin Nunes, who's not playing, has enjoyed eight. He was their wide receiver who is not playing today. And the trio has accounted for 19 of New Bedford's 28 touchdowns. So they break the huddle with number 21 in motion. Hand the ball off to number 12, Mike LaJoy. He looks to number 15, Mike Raposa. They go for that? two. They're successful with it. How about that? That was just sweet. That was set up perfectly, and New Bedford goes for two, and they take a 23 to 14 lead here at Paul Walsh Field. And it is very important for this Durfee coaching staff and Durfee football players to stay focused because nine minutes, 22 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, plenty of football left. Yeah, and it's a two possession game now with that two point conversion because Durfee needs two scores. They can't take a lead or tie this game with one score of the football, with one scoring drive. So. Uh, lots of work to be done now for the Hilltoppers. Saturday, December 1st, we ask you to please join us for live coverage of the Christmas Parade in Fall River where they light the tree and you can join us. We're also going to be doing team action, double team action. We're also going to be bringing you Operation Christmas Telethon this time uh, next weekend, the first weekend of December. So the Christmas Parade, we're going to be doing double duty. We've got to thank everybody who puts it all together, starting with Renee Kochman, producers Mike Ferreira, Alex Mello, Gary Leet, Phil, and the New Bedford crew. Also thanking everybody who's bringing us the coverage here. We're also gonna give some credit to the uh, New Bedford uh, crew and the camera crew who's working with us. Uh, the Christmas parade next weekend to start at 10 a.m. That's for sure, and the parade features some of the balloons from the Macy's Day Parade, which is going on right now, actually, all over New York City. and. They're, as you said, they're going to light the tree. It's 45 feet tall and weighs 9,000 pounds. It's the largest in the history of Fall River. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to drive by Government Center and see what it looks like. So we'll be busy next weekend. Hope you can join us for that. But we're busy on the football field right now. Number two, Isaiah Slowick takes it all the way out to about the 32-yard line for the Durfee Hilltoppers as the Hilltoppers enter this drive in a two-possession defeat right now. 23-14 in the fourth quarter with about nine minutes and 14 seconds to go. Yeah, lots of work to be done, as I said, for the Hilltoppers. They need to play now with a little sense of urgency, uh, something we didn't see go at the end of the uh, first half. They let the clock wind down, and what's going to happen? The clock is not going to be your friend right now. You need to find the end zone. You need to stay within yourselves and you need to really make some quick plays. Make some adjustments, because New Bedford has done that. Durfee hasn't made any adjustments, and that's why they haven't scored in the second half. So I'm blocked by a pillar directly in front of me right now, so I'm gonna do my very best to tell you what's going on. So bear with me as we bring you coverage of football here. <laughs> the beauties Qu of live television, Cliff. Qu Quentin Souza <laughs> leading the Hilltoppers, putting number 18, Michael Carrer, in motion. Passes the ball to number 18, Michael Carrer. He takes it all the way out. He's moving to about the 42-yard line as he's pushed and taken out of bounds by number seven, Corey Barboza of the New Bedford Whalers. Just shy of a first down, maybe about a yard or two, but this is something, this is what's been working for Durfee. You can see, look at that. Snap, quick pass to the outside and run with it. That's what was working so well for the Hilltoppers in the first half. We haven't seen much of that here in the second half. And if they're going to score any more points in this game, I think they need to go right back to that original game plan. Durfee needs to get back to the consistency of what made them successful the first half of this football game. And let's see what they do. But this time they open up with Michael Carrera on your far side right. They don't open up with a, a they actually put number four Spencer boarded in motion from your far side left, moving halfway through the center in the A-gap. Number 22, Raheem Barzi puts a solid block down. It was complete to number four, Spencer Borden. There was a penalty marker on the field. Big hit by Cody Fumo, the tight end for New Bedford, a senior this year. 
And there appears to be a false start against the Durfee Hilltoppers. That's going to send them back five. It will remain second down. So that's going to hurt. What was the second and four is going to be a second and nine, almost back where you started. Depending on what Coach Golden decides he wants to do, does he want to take it or set him back? And it is false start against the Hilltoppers. It's going to set him back five. It's going to be a second and nine, as you mentioned, Evan. It will remain second down. You know, most of the time, I say 99% of the time, you see coaches take the penalties. But in this case, it would have made it third down and four versus second and nine. So now you're giving the Hilltoppers two more opportunities to get a first down. I would have maybe de declined the penalty on that one. Second down and nine, 23-14, New Bedford. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go in this fourth quarter of football. Paul Waltzfield in New Bedford. Quinton Souza breaks the huddle with his team. Career to your far side right, putting number four Spencer Borden in motion. He sets up in the A-gap, looks to be the same play again, and they do. He sits back to pass, and he is met by a few of New Bedford Whalers accompanying him and starring in the play for New Bedford is number 52, Tyler Arena. So that sets the Hilltoppers back deeper than they really want to be right now in a drive that is oh so important for them to score. That's a big, big loss right there. The snap, and you're right, it was the same play but the Whalers defense was ready for it. Number 52 for the Whalers, uh, big part in that. That's Tyler Arena, the other captain for the Whalers, and they knocked Durfee back a good 10 yards. So third and 20 coming up, a near impossible situation. Third down and 20, third and long for the Hilltoppers. They started this drive within their own 40, now pushed back to their own 20. Third and 19, they need 19 clock is ticking away. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to go in this football game. New Bedford on top, 23-14. Quentin Souza moves farther and farther back, sets to throw. It is, in, it is intercepted by number 30 for the New Bedford Whalers. That is Carl Santos. And that will be the third turnover of this football game for the Durfee Hilltoppers and Evan, we might have to look back at this football game at the end and see the turnovers really is what set the difference. That's for sure, you're gonna see the replay on your screen. Uh, Souza has time, but he kind of rushes it and the defense was ready for it. Great pick there, leaping catch. That's actually the fourth turnover, third interception. But you remember there was a fumble, Spencer Borden fumbled it back towards the end of the half as well, end of the first half, so that, that just, that might seal this one. I, I am going out on the limb and saying that because seven plus minutes to play, you need two scores in this one. It, it's just not looking too good for Jerfy at this point. Interesting to see what New Bedford does. They decide to put the ball on the ground. They hand the ball off to their star running back, number 12, Mike LaJoy. He is met by number 37, sophomore Brad Kilby. And you know what, That's this is about what you're going to see now going forward. I'm sure New Bedford wants to give the fans one more reason to cheer and try to find the end zone and score some points, but you're gonna see a lot of running now because the clock's just gonna keep ticking and keep winding down, and that's now basically the mode of uh, operation, the MO that you're seeing uh, now from the Whalers. They're just gonna run the ball and run the time. Running the ball and running the time is exactly what they need to do right now because the timeout has actually, timeout has been taken by New Bedford. It appears that New Bedford needs to uh, regroup a little bit on the offensive side in terms of a game plan of what they want to do here, but we're looking at a second down and about 11. Double stakes here. So as we just say, keep the clock rolling, they have to stop it because they weren't prepared for this next play. Um, I think at this time, this would be a good time to uh, thank New Bedford. New Bedford's producers, they're bringing us the pictures. We have Dan Cabral, director Bob Parati, cameras Ethan Lopez, Jacob Miller, and Matt Mora, and instant replay being done by Alexandra Siegel. They're doing a great job. The pictures look great, and we thank them very much for their cooperation and helping us out, bringing us the pictures that you're seeing on your TV this afternoon. And we thank you for joining us as well. Setback number 15, Mike Raposa, incomplete oh, pass. Just out of reach. Oh, it would have looked real good, though, for New Bedford's number seven. That would be Corey Barboza, who's had a good ball game today so far. That could have been a touchdown reception there for uh, Raposa and, uh, is it Raposa and Barboza? That would, that would be Raposa and Barboza, number seven, Corey Raposa, who checks in as 5'11", 170 pound senior. Yeah, that was just out of the, just out of reach. 
and you see the frustration. You saw the replay on your screen. He wanted that one. He wanted to get down into the end zone. Play clock is showing six minutes and 44 seconds. Six minutes, 44 seconds. Third down in about 11 for this new Bedford offense. Step back looking for a pass number 15, Mike Raposa, and it is an incomplete pass intended for number 12, Mike LaJoy, seeing a lot of pressure. In there with pressure was number one for the Hilltoppers, Jonathan Torres, also accompanying him was sophomore linebacker Brad Kilby, also in on that action, Manny Fernandez. so plenty of good pressure there. Definitely. And as a result of that, it is a fourth down here for the New Bedford Whalers as the ball is placed shy of the 45 yard line closer to the 46 yard line here 45 yard line 46 yard line or so give or take so Raposa getting up he's getting ready to kick this one but he was kind of wiggling and stretching out his throwing arm so that's something we're going to keep an eye on as we go towards the end of this game uh, he came down hard at, on the pass rush Durfee tackling him and the punt is what they do elect to do a fair catch is called by the Hilltoppers they're going to let the ball bounce, though, and it's going to be a... Inside the 10, wow. It's going to be inside the 10. So this is what we spoke Great about punt. earlier in this drive, Evan. Great what the punt. Hilltoppers may have, should have, or should have tried to do, but didn't. Yes. It's they should have punted the ball, because this is the situation that would have happened earlier in the game when New Bedford had such good field position after the fourth down. If Durfee had punted, you would have seen a similar situation like this and made New Bedford have to actually really drive down the field. So with this six minutes and 35 seconds to go, it is a first down and 10 for the Durfee Hilltoppers within their, within their own territory, deep in their own 10. Looks to be about the nine yard line or so where the official pinpoints us. I think it's time to uh, try to start running the ball as well for the Hilltoppers because to try to pass, the pass rush for the Whalers has been really good in the second half. The last thing you want is a safety in the end zone. They're so close to the end zone. But nonetheless, look at setting, getting back. Setting back to pass, and it is complete to number two, Raheem Barzi. But it appears to be a loss of yardage there for the Hilltoppers as he is tackled right before the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so that didn't work. I would have tried running the ball in that situation. Just try to get some yardage so you can get away from the end zone. You can see on your screen here, the pass was complete, but the pressure just right there. New Bedford all over him. We could see that Durfee hasn't relied much confidence on their running game so far this game and all season long, but we also have been shocked to see quite a bit so far today with how many times they have put some points on the board and the way they have moved the ball. But consistency is key, and this Durfee offense is lacking that so far this second half of football. Five minutes and 44 seconds as the clock is ticking. Second down and 14 from the six-yard line. Quinton Souza takes the snap, looks deep downfield and he is that's a safety tackled in the within the end zone area we don't have a call from the official quite yet and then oh, there's the ball there is, is at not the a one. safety so the, the ball half yard line cliff the ball is half to dip it is out it is third down the ball is inches away from the goal line we'll see on your screen this is as good a view as we're going to get and look somehow the ball crossed out of the goal out of the end zone, excuse me. And give a lot of credit to number seven, Quinton Souza for the Hilltoppers muscling that to avoid the safety, which would probably put this game completely out of whack. So as you can see, five minutes, under five minutes to go, 23-14. It is a third down and long for the Hilltoppers as they, as they are on their own one yard line or inches from their goal line. So they spread their offense out tremendously here. As you can see on your far side right, Kobe Cabral, Michael Carrera on your far side left. A timeout has been taken by the Durfee Hilltoppers. We're going to take this time out to remind you once again uh, to join us next weekend. You can join us either on Fred TV or you can join us for Operation Christmas Telethon at the Harbor Mall. We'll also be giving you coverage of the Christmas parade kicking off on South Main Street in Fall River at 10 a.m. Be plenty of exciting things you can take the little ones, the Macy's balloons, the light tree 45 feet tall right in front of Government Center, the largest in history. And it is something that is exciting, and we hope that you can join us for it next week in an Operation Christmas Telethon. It's kind of in my blood. I do it every year. Evan, you've been doing it since you've been in high school. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the first weekend of December. It's the first feeling of Christmas. It's the first feeling of really, Christmas. And right is. after Thanksgiving's over, everybody really focuses their time. And we need to tell you how important it is to join us next weekend for the Operation Christmas Telethon because the times are tough and the economy is tough, and we need your help. And 
helping the underprivileged children in the city of Fall River and the greater Fall River community with our friends at Citizens for Citizens. Barbara does a great job. She's Absolutely. stressing calling Renee every 15 minutes probably right now, <laughs> but it's all meant for good. Uh, and we ask it is. You it's, it's all for the good, and, and you know, there's going to be a lot of great auction items. That's the big moneymaker. That's what really helps this charity and this, this charitable event, I should say. And uh, so be sure to tune in and, and bid and, and just join us next weekend for what will be a lot of fun. Quinton Souza throws for his life away, and it is intercepted by New Bedford's number 43. He takes it in for a touchdown. Number 43, Jared, Jared Tavares takes it in. That about does it, Cliff. And unfortunately, <laughs> that does it. Well, I really have no choice. We're looking for just yeah. pride at this time. Yeah, that was, you know, we talked about in the open, controlling the football. We got a man down on the field. And we have a penalty marker on the field, too. There definitely looks to be some kind of sportsmanlike conduct in the far right hash mark of the end zone with a Durfee player down. Hope he's okay. But there, there was definitely a little bit of a scrumble over there on the far side right of the end zone, our, your far side right. Yeah, Souza takes a hit, he gets the pass off, and it's intercepted. That's his fourth interception of the afternoon, and that just... You know, that, that, that spells doom right there. Four oh. interceptions in any game is never good, but in this one where you're trailing to give up your fourth at this point in the game, it, it's, it's disastrous. So there is a man down there also as a penalty marker on the field. The official did confirm it is a touchdown, so the unsportsmanlike penalty might be assessed for the Hilltoppers on, on, the, kickoff, on, on yeah. the kickoff. Actually, the man is it still is down. To be, to be honest with you, what what the play was there was two unsportsmanlike penalties. They will offset each other. So there was an unsportsmanlike penalty on the Durfee Hilltoppers, an unsportsmanlike penalty on the New Bedford Whalers. Two dead ball falls will offset each other. As a result, it'll be a touchdown for the New Bedford Whalers taking it back. That time was number 43, Jared Tavares for the New Bedford Whalers. He is a the defensive back. He's 5'7", 160 pounds, senior for the New Bedford Whalers. And unfortunately, we see uh, with that touchdown, a lot of the Durfee fans now filing out. Uh, you can see, We saw it on the screen. They're starting to leave. And, you know, again, the game's, it's all about fun. It's all about tradition. I'm sure Durfee really wanted this one, but it's, at this point, pretty much out of reach. Under five minutes to play. Um, and you're looking at three or four possessions now. It's not going to happen. Cliff Ponte, Evan Mastrud, bringing you coverage of New Bedford, Durfee football in, in, in a football game, Evan, that's been going back since 1910. And we were discussing at the Open. We discussed different parts of the game today. You know, everybody was coming up. And even, you know, our colleagues here in the booth were discussing, I don't know about this football game. Durfee has appeared to be very weak in a lot of their football games. Yeah. But they came out poised. They came out strong. A very young defense, a very young offense, a very young team overall who's seen quite a bit of turnover. They, Durfee did graduate a very, very uh, high class last year of seniors. Yes. Uh, which, as a result of that, uh, definitely did hurt them the beginning stages. But they did come together, and a lot of credit needs to be due to this Durfee uh, football program for coming together. Even though the results are not what they wanted, they did play clean, hard-nosed Durfee football. Absolutely. Is what is you know what is the Bible for Durfee football? That uh, give you know Coach Steve Wanowski when his tenure was here, yes. uh, stuff that he envisioned and and and, and the. Uh, the work ethic he instilled in his football place is carried out into the Pop Warner stages and also to this stage with Coach Jones now at the helm for this Durfee football program. That's for sure. Set to kick the extra point is number 15, Mike Raposa. He's successful at that. It is 30 to 14 with four minutes and 20 seconds to go here in a game that has gone completely out of whack here, Evan, uh, for this Durfee football team. Yeah, 18 unanswered points here. Uh, Durfee has not scored at all in the second half, so New Bedford clearly made plenty of adjustments and, and changes to their game plan at the half. I do want to make a quick note on uh, the injured player on the field that was Durfee's junior, Cody LaPont, uh, LaPointe, excuse me. Uh, good to see him getting up and moving under his own power. Um, and uh, we'll try to see if we can get any information on to what happened in that situation. The 5'10", 195-pound juniors had a great game on the offensive and defensive side of the football was Cody LaPointe for the Hilltoppers. And a lot of the seniors uh, that we need to make mention here, Evan, uh, on this Durfee football team, which are not many. Uh, we're gonna, Isaiah Slowick, number two, he's a senior, he's graduating this year. Uh, number four, Spencer Borna, he's a captain. Uh, Quinton Souza, uh, we also have, uh, let's pay some respects to the senior class as well, from Troy Travassos, uh, Max Mercer, 
uh, Joey Manchester, Manny Fernandes. You got Raheem Barzi too. Raheem Barzi as well. We have um, we have also uh, Jaden Silva is a senior. Omi Montetez, uh, Bryce Lambert, Alex Costa, Jaden Texero who's had a great game on the defensive line for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Jacob Kennedy, also an offensive lineman who's done quite well for this Durfee. Uh, offensive line. Picked up here number 18, Michael Carrera, who's had a great game for this Durfee team. The sophomore takes it out to about the 30-yard line. Also, let's continue on that list. Number 83, Domingo Estrella and Jose Soares, also uh, the senior class. And, and this is the time of the year that a lot of these men, you know, put their uniforms on for the very last time, Evan. Yep, and, and they're, uh, you know, they're playing in their last minutes of, of high school football, and some of them probably going on to play college football. Some of them, maybe not. Maybe this was just a fun way to have uh, play in a team sport. So some pursuing other ventures as well. We discussed during the half, the not only does it help you as an individual, but you the lessons that you learn playing Durfee football are, are, are unbelievable. That is an incomplete pass intended for number four. Spencer, Spencer Borden. Borden for the Hilltoppers, the senior, 180 pound senior for the Hilltoppers, who's had a good game. Accompanying him was number 18, Michael Carrere, who is only a sophomore. I'm sure a lot of light at the end of the tunnel for this Durfee football program. Also, I uh, want to make note, number 43, Alex Benavides. He's only a sophomore starting guard for the Hilltoppers. He's 5'8", 190 pounds. Also, a pretty good wrestler for this Durfee football, uh, football program. And that'll be on his mind as soon as this game is over because the winter season is very close to starting, and uh, that's when the wrestling season begins. Number two, Isaiah Slowick on the completion for the Hilltoppers. That brings them out to about a four-yard gain there for Durfee. New Bedford 30, Durfee 14. The clock is winding down with just about four minutes and ten seconds to go in this football game. We thank you so much for joining us today and enjoying this coverage. I'm saying that that could be the first thing on Alex's mind. I'm thinking that on everybody's mind on the field, a turkey feast is first thing on their mind of as soon course. as this game is over. Of course, you know, you, you work hard. I haven't eaten anything all day because I was in a rush because I was afraid I was going to hit some, you know, traffic. Thanksgiving traffic or something. Possible. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> even out on the roads. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm worried about traffic. But nevertheless, we're here. And, and everything went so far so good here uh, on our side of things. We need to thank our crew. That That's is an pass incomplete interference. Pass. Totally. Definitely a pass interference there. That totally. goes to number nine of Hunter the New Bedford Flugel. Whalers, Hunter Fugel. Not happy about it, the tight end, but that was clear. He tripped up. Uh, was it Correa? It was Michael Correa that he tripped up. So and that that's a good call by the officials. That is going to result in an automatic first down for this Durfee offense, which needs every break that they can take. Definitely. And, you know, we talked about my predictions, about people maybe kicking me for my predictions. My prediction is pretty close now, now that we're seeing how this fourth quarter is panning out. 30 to 14, my prediction was 37 to 18, New Bedford. So we're pretty close, actually. I'm, I'm pretty uh, surprised. Did you bet the spread, Evan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sacked in the backfield. And sacked in the backfield is number seven, Quinton Souser. Now all Durfee's really doing is playing for some pride, and hopefully they walk off this football field with their heads up, with Durfee pride all over the place, because this Durfee football team and this football program has shocked us yes. and has shocked a lot of people the way they played here today. Played their hearts out in this one, and uh, that's, you know, again, it's all about heart, it's all about tradition, it's about rivalry, friendly rivalry. We haven't really seen any unsportsmanlike conduct until these last couple of minutes where we saw that, and, you know, it's, this is such a tradition-rich thing, and it's, it's, it's so much fun to be a part of. So this is going to mark New Bedford's fifth straight New Bedford win. The last time the Hilltoppers won on Thanksgiving morning was in 2007. When that BJ finalized uh, three years in a row. When B.J. McDonald and his Durfee offense pulled together a solid win, 37-34. Durfee did win in 05, 12-7, which was a nail-biter in 06, 20-13. 06, 06 was here in the rain. It I remember was, that I remember one. That. In snow, and boy, was it cold. <laughs> uh, and in 2008, New Bedford did beat uh, Durfee 37-6. Uh, to 6. In 09, New Bedford manhandled Durfee 49-28. And it got closer and closer. In 2010, New Bedford uh, beat Durfee 21-7. And in 2011, it was a close one. Going to the final minutes of that one last year at Durfee High School, 18 to 16. Yeah, this one kind of 
falling fell apart here in the second half for Durfee because, as we said, they were up 14 to 12, something I don't think anybody expected, Durfee or New Bedford. And um, well, pressure again on Souza, and he's sacked again. The, the clock is wow. under three minutes now, and Quinton Souza is feeling the pain. Sacked by number 40 of the New Bedford Whalers defense. That sack credit goes to number 40, Cody Fomo, for the New Bedford Whalers. Yeah, he went right around number 74 for Durfee. That's Kendrick Dixon, uh, right around the offensive line, and just sacked him. Looking at a fourth and about. Uh, 22 that's just it's time to punt <laughs> it, 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 it's it, definitely it, time to punt it's definitely time to punt we've seen crazier things happen though Evan last year Durfee hosted New Bedford coming into the game with a 1-8 and eight mark while New Bedford needed a victory to secure playoff berth last year and it was far They're from easy it. for New Bedford last year and in the beginning stages of this game it was completely uh, completely different as well that punt I don't think I've ever seen anything like that the snap was dropped by Spencer Borden, ran to the far side like he was going to carry it, and then like drop kicked it across the field, somehow able to get it down to the 35. That was something I don't think I've ever, ever seen. Not at this level anyway. Wow. But as we always say, high school football, expect the unexpected. Anything can happen. So last year, uh, Durfee trailed New Bedford 18 to eight going into the halftime, and Durfee came out strong and hard after halftime last year and it was an inches and inches away a game of a possession last year 18 to 16 and this year Evan the tides changed New Bedford came out with adjustments and made strong adjustments and as you can see it really shows at the final it does yes 30 to 14 right now is the score and uh, unless New Bedford plays in a hurry up offense just to run up the score which you know every minute of the game is part of the game so I have no problems with an offense that wants to keep things moving uh, we see that from the New England Patriots all the time. That's how they, that's how they live is, is you know running the ball and moving the ball and always playing the game hard no matter what the score is. So as a fan of offense, I don't mind it because at this point the game's out of reach anyway. Great game for that fellow right there, number 12, senior Mike LaJoy. He had a great game. That's for sure. And you can see the emotions are getting to him now as many players do. The last time they're going to suit up. Yeah, the last lots time. of hugs on the sidelines you see. The last time he's going to suit up for maybe for the rest of his life, but you know, he left it all on the football field today, much to both Durfee and New Bedford. Yes. Handoff does go to New Bedford. Wow, nice run. And a nice run brought there by New Bedford's number 36. That is number 36, Angel Lopez. He is a 5'7, 155 pound senior getting the carry there for New Bedford. So Cliff, we're coming up on uh, 60 seconds left. What are your thoughts going forward here into next season? I think the, the, the Hilltoppers, and, and we were speaking to the athletic director, Vic Pereira, prior to this game today. He mentioned this, this program has a lot of changes to be made and changes in terms of scheduling. The MIAA has made some changes. And number 36. 37 point, 36 points. 36, Angel Lopez brings it back for a touchdown for the New Bedford Whalers. And that brings this game completely out of whack here, which went from a real close game starting this third quarter, or the second half rather, 36-14, with about 40 seconds to go in this football game. <laughs> I have to tell you, I have our, our cameraman, Gary Lee. He's pointing at me, he says, Evan, your predictions, we were joking about at the open. Not too shabby, I'd have to say, if I'm patting myself on the back here. Okay. Not the outcome I wanted. <laughs> I know, but you know what? It, to be but, honest with you, if we, if we were putting everything together beginning of this football game, we would have <laughs> never thought that it would have ended up the way it has. I know. The way the Jerfy came out to execute. There's a couple Flags penalty everywhere. markers. I know. I, it's you. You have to. You're very right about that, Cliff. You know, we wouldn't have expected this to end like this because of how great both teams were playing in the first half, and clearly the second half has been a one-sided affair. And the defense, the defense, just not be not able to get it done here in the second half. The you know, to, an, to answer your question, Evan Durfee, um, this is by far the best football performance they portrayed in this game. All season long. I mean, oh, and, that's and, for sure. And I and I know you dig a little deeper on Thanksgiving morning for football and to see what really happens. Uh, but you know, it, it, Durfee coming into this game being outscored 354 to 88, you would have never known that. This looked like a team 
who, who were, were filled with veterans in the beginning of this, this, this game, and it is certainly not the case. So a team that definitely has a lot of light at the end of their tunnel uh, with a young, young offense, a young defense. I mean, their offense uh, anchored by number seven, Quinton Souza. Uh, I mean, he, he had a tremendous game. Uh, Raheem Barzi is a senior. He's 5'11", 185. He brought a lot of leadership, and Coach Jones mentioned in the Herald News today how important that was uh, for his leadership and Spencer Borden's leadership and Isaiah Slowick's leadership. I mean, these these seniors uh, definitely brought out a lot, and, and, and especially sure. a lot in themselves as men and young adults, and also the younger the younger men. Uh, young adults who are going to be playing in years to come here at Durfee High School. Of course, because as a captain, you have to set the example. And uh, they, they showed how to go out. And unfortunately, this group of seniors don't get to experience a win on Thanksgiving Day because New Bedford now will make it five straight with this win today. Um, but with that said, though, they played with a lot of pride. It's always about Durfee pride. That's something that Superintendent Meg Mayo Brown and Principal Paul, Paul Marshall always stress. No matter what the outcome, it's about playing with Durfee pride and playing, um, just playing good, solid teamwork and having good sportsmanship. That's what it's all about. Six underclassmen started today on the offensive side. Eight for the offense. Number 18, Michael Carrere, who had a superb first half, is tackled at just shy of the 15-yard line with about 36 seconds to go. Hilltopper's probably going to run the ball, run this game out, unfortunately. And the result wasn't what we anticipated or what we were thinking going into the third quarter here, Evan. That's but sure. it is what it is, and, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of lessons learned from, from everybody. But really, Durfee, and we'll discuss this more in our post game, but Durfee really has nothing nothing to be ashamed about. They put all no, their heart not. on this football field today. I don't think any team would... Regardless of what the outcome is on Thanksgiving, I don't think any team, Durfee or New Bedford, or even stemming to other rivalry games, you know, throughout the Northeast, there is uh, there's nothing to hang your hat about. They're always we, we would always like, playing with pride. We would like to thank our staff and the and the crew that was down in our truck who was here nice and early this morning, away from their families, executive producer. And, and the real captain of this program, Fred TV, Renee Kotschman, who's done he, uh, an amazing job and from a personal basis helped me when I was in high school and in this program as well. And, oh, me too. And, Renee's and, a great you know, guy. And he's, he's definitely brought this program to new heights and I uh, would like sure. to thank him as he's the captain of, of this squad and producers Mike Ferreira, Alex Mello. Uh, production support goes to Gary Lee, Phil Sabatino, uh, who could be with their families but instead are here with us on Thanksgiving morning and afternoon. And we're all excited for turkey, and I'm, I'm sure everybody has a nice warm plate ready, ready for them when they get back. But also a big thank you has to go to the New Bedford crew, who has been nothing but a, a, a family in this football game, as it is a rivalry, a rivalry that's been going back since 1909, 100 plus years. But you know, up here in the booth, and. With the band, and another good example of that, Evan, was the band was playing together, Durfee and New Bedford. It wasn't one band was playing on one side of the field and another band was playing on another side of the field. We were, they were playing as one, and, and that's yep. definitely something that shows unity, and, 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 and it's very important, it especially very at this important. level. And you mentioned New Bedford. I want to once again just run down the credits for them as well, the New Bedford Cable. As this game concludes, we want to thank producer Dan Cabral, director Bob Parati, Nathan Lopez. Jacob Miller, Matt Mora, and Alexandra Siegel. We want to thank them for their help and their cooperation as well to help us bring this to you in Fall River. And as the New Bedford players dump water on their coach, Dennis Golden, that will put an end to this football game. Thanksgiving morning, 36-14, New Bedford pulls this off. And Evan, we, we often discussed and we were speaking as they clap hands here and, and they look look at each other and say good game a very well officiated football game here there were no issues from the official standpoint uh, give credit to Jimmy Ashley and his crew he's the commissioner of the uh, referee association here uh, that put veteran officials on this football game big three game very important a lot of the officials uh, which I am now one I, I took my classes this year so I know a lot of these a lot of these guys you know they they really came out and, and and they officiated this game clean. There was there was no issues. You know, there's a lot of tension between Durfee and New Bedford on on, on often cases. There was one little issue, but you know, very well taken care of, uh, and give a lot of credit to both Durfee and New Bedford. 
That's for sure. Sportsmanship was a top-notch level in this game, and, and both teams played extremely strong again. It got away from Durfee in the fourth quarter, but this was a really good football game. As it always ends up being on Thanksgiving, something special tends to happen, no matter what the outcome is. And I'd like you to mention, Evan, you know, the at the end of the day, this Durfee football program was was coming into this game a serious underdog underdogs yes. i mean nobody Absolutely. nobody thought that they would play as hard as they do and and right now on on the football field you know we see them all clapping giving each other hugs probably a little group prayer here as they usually do mm -hmm. but durfee really has nothing to be ashamed about so talk about the youth Evan. talk about this the future of this program how important is it for durfee to come out work hard in the off season hit the weight room and really have a good product in the football field next year. Well, I think they have a great future. You know, this winless season is something that's going to really stick in the players' minds that are returning for next year. It's not something that they're going to want to have happen next year. And I think the biggest key, come out on opening day with your guns rearing and score a lot of points and win opening day or opening night, depending on when they play. That's, that, to me, is going to be a big key to how the rest of next season goes. Because if they start winless, it's just going to be like, oh, Back to last year. So you know, it's going to stick in their minds, and there's a lot of youth, like like you said, that, that is going to be sticking around for next year, hopefully. And, and, you know, we saw a lot of it today, and it's going to be exciting next year, I hope. It's also equally as exciting for us to mention uh, the youth in the city of Fall River. We, we often discussed a lot about the Durfee football program and the seniors and the juniors, but also encouraging the community for like the Fall River Falcons, for example. Absolutely. Uh, the Fall River Falcons are a Pop Warner football program in Fall River. Uh, it all starts here. I coached a lot of these kids when I was coaching who are seniors this year. Mm -hmm. My brother graduated last year. Timmy was went through all four years of, you know, five, six years of Pop Warner, and a lot of these kids did. So it all starts with the foundation. The foundation's Absolutely. brought at the Pop Warner level, and, and a lot of these kids graduated. Brad Kielby coached him. He, he's a great football player, starting sophomore here now. So... A lot of light at the end of the tunnel, and I guess the message here is to get your children involved, get involved, and it's equally as important. Absolutely, because you know what? Playing on team sports, working with in any situation, if it's like a group project, even in school, mm -hmm. it builds character and it helps you learn how to communicate with each other and, and learn each other's points of views and, and opinions on things. So working on a team, it really teaches a lot, and that's important for the youth of the city. We'd like to thank everybody at the Fret TV crew, Rene Kochman, Mike Ferreira, Alex Mello, Gary Lee, and Phil Sabatino for devoting their time. Evan Massu, thank you very much. It was a pleasure doing this game with Same you. Here, and we ask you to please join us again ne next weekend. So for the final time at Paul Walsh Field in New Bedford, the final score is New Bedford 36, Durfee 14. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family.